Hello, hello, everybody. We are going to continue our Ace Attorney journey with the second day of Farewell My Turnabout. This twisted case that is all over the place, and I do not know exactly what is going on. Because, <laughs> like... Uh, at least we removed Adrian Andrews as, like, an active participant, but it is still, like, very odd because they're still going after Matt on guard, even though literally every piece of evidence that Matt killed, on, uh, killed the guy, Corrida, like, every piece of evidence that would directly tie Matt to the scene is gone. Every single one. The... And, like, if anything, literally all of the evidence points to Andrews doing it, even though people are like... Uh, it's just hilarious that there's all this stuff, and in the end she did admit to like, stabbing the body and framing Matt for it. It's just hilarious that they're like, ah, oh, yes, there's no evidence, really, to say that Matt did it, but we're still gonna go after him. It just seems weird. And they might be like, hey, he has a motive that was revealed with Adrian Andrews' crime of stabbing a body and framing another person for the crime. Is it still... Well, I guess it's still technically a crime to frame somebody who committed a crime. It's like, my brain is going to word it like this. It is still a crime to frame somebody for a crime, even if they committed the crime. Because you are trying to illegally, like, essentially you are putting false evidence that ties somebody to the crime. And even if they were the one who committed the crime, you are still unlawfully trying to weight the case against them, so that's still a crime. But yeah, they might say that Matt has a, a case, or like a motive, to want to kill Juan Corrida because, oh, Juan Corrida was going to pose as the uh, Nickel Samurai and confess something that would destroy Matt on guard. Yet they have... Yet even if he was going to do that, which it seems he was, they have yet to supply anything about him, like, Matt also knowing that he was going to do it. Sure, if Matt knew he was going to do it, but they have yet to supply any evidence that he knew about his own motive. But other crazy things, Franziska von Karma got shot. At this point, I'm fairly certain the killer has to be somebody we haven't met yet, which is kind of lame, personally. Or who knows, maybe, since this is only the second day of the cry of the, well, investigation trial stuff, maybe we'll meet them undisguised in this one. <laughs> it... it it just feels very weird because the last w the last trial section just went so hard and so intense. It's weird to continue on from here, but I guess we shall. Let's go. We have to go to the hottie clinic again. We already uh, talked to him about everything. I wonder if he'll say anything else about, like, anything. Could you please take a look at this? Um, I can't think of any. I need to get my voice back for him. I can't think of anything to say about this, pal. Why don't I, I make us some instant noodles instead? That's okay, really. Poor guy. Would be kind of amusing if he is, like, here forever. But I guess first things first, we'll go to the detention center. See if he's there. He probably won't be there. And then we'll follow up on the hottie clinic. But first, detention center. See if he's there. He might be in for questioning, which... Is there any really anything left? From what the guard told me, it sounds like along with Mr. On Guard, Miss Andrews is also being detained here. Then we should talk with them since we're here. Yeah, but both of them are still in questioning. Hmm. And we don't have time to waste. Yeah, visiting hours are almost over. Oh yeah, because... 
technically, the, oh yeah, because I suppose this is the day still of the trial. It just went on for a long time. Well, off to the hottie clinic we go. Will we run into the fake hottie? Never thought I'd ever come back to this place. The real question is, why would Franziska be sent here instead of the actual hospital? Mm, yes. Are you here to visit a patient? Mm. Ah, hi. Wait a second. You're... Mm, yes, I'm Director Hottie. <laughs> why are you still here? Mm, yes, what is it? Mm, can I help you? You can tell me. <laughs> yes. Director Hottie. Oh, that's the wrong voice at all. Director Hottie. Edgeworth. Mm, yes, I'm Director Harty. <laughs> oh, you're the man from this morning. Mm, yes, what is it? <laughs> Director Franziska. How is Franziska von Karma? Mm, you don't need to worry. Yes, she's in good hands. <laughs> because you see, I'm personally taking good care of her. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, and that thing, that surgery, it went well. You have my gratitude. Does does he not know that this really isn't him? Like, this isn't actually Director Hottie. He's just a crazy guy who lives here, apparently. Looks like Edgeworth doesn't know about this director and his secret. She looked so pitiful. Absolutely terrified. Yes. But I understand. Yes. Her opponent was a gun, after all. And when I snuck up on her real secret like, she would scream really loud. Yes. My C. Ah, uh, but she's really cute, too. When I do that, she'd whip me with her whip. <laughs> but did I cry? Boy, did I cry, little licker baby. Yes. But I think I could get used to it. <laughs> Go back to your room. You're so mean. <laughs> so mean. My frisky brisker. But that's good for... <laughs> okay, okay. I... Yes. It's time for my IV drops. Yes. And what are those tulips doing in your hands, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Ah, I know I shouldn't have come here. I, ha I brought tulips. And <laughs> is... Edgeworth just standing there saw all that. <laughs> Hilarious. I was shot in front of the courthouse, in my right shoulder. Hmm, but it's no big deal. This sort of thing happens all the time. I even had full intentions of running the trial this morning. With a gunshot wound? But, but that would have been too much for you. There's no need to act tough in front of us, you know. Regardless, I was dragged here by that man over there. He was so unyielding, one has to wonder if he was simply interested in stealing my case. It is I, Manfred von Karma, who shot my daughter on her shoulder. Probably a crazy person. Really, I'd be... Honestly, I'm less worried about the, uh, like, gunman and more worried about Dr. Hottie. He's a weird man. It was the only logical course of action, given the bullet was still lodged in your shoulder. But by taking over the case, I found myself having to clean up after you and that irresponsible deal you made. I think I know what deal he's referring to. Miss Von Karma, you made a deal with Miss Andrews yesterday, didn't you? I don't know what you mean. In order to make sure you got your guilty verdict on Mr. Ungard, you told Miss Andrews to not testify in court today. Hmm, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Do you have proof that they made such a deal? You're denying it? It looks like you were lucky, Mr. Phoenix Wright. If I had been in court today, this trial would already be over. All while hiding Miss Andrews' own crime? That isn't my problem. Whether she had tampered with the evidence or not, I have only one objective, to find on God guilty of murder. The end justifies the means, Mr. Phoenix, right? The end justifies the means. Miss Von Karma, Adrian Andrews believed you when you said, if you don't tell the truth of what really happened, then on guard will be found guilty. Then what does that have to do with me? Because of that, she's now in danger of being found guilty herself. All because she believed in your words until the very end. That still has nothing to do with me. She's just a weak person, that's all. But you had to know she was... Ow! I think visiting hours here are about over. So if you'll excuse me. What's wrong? Why did she suddenly cut you off? Probably because she thinks I had advantage in that argument. Medgeworth. 
Well, let's talk to you now. What happened today at the trial, Edgeworth? I was not like you at all. I mean, I know you knew about Miss Andrews' condition. You could have made her testify as many times as you wanted, but to go that far... Ah, uh, but she wouldn't testify about that until I said something. Listen, right? The courtroom is a garden of judgment. I'm putting myself in the line when I stand there. And that's why I made the witness do the same. It's only natural. By the way, Edgeworth, you were really angry in court today. That's rare for you. Witness that card! Give it to me! Hurry! Do you have any idea what you have stupidly yet inadvertently done? This! I can't believe you hid this from me all this time! That card. What in the world is it? You mean this. Listen, right? This is top secret information. You absolutely cannot leak this. A special investigations team has existed for a number of years, but few know of it. I understand. Their task is to find the owner of this card. A man called Shelley DeKiller. You mean that he didn't even lie? His name is literally DeKiller? You are saying that... And is it, did you said assassin? Or did you? Like, I can only assume weird things... A man called Shelley to kill him, then again, assassin called to kill her, that would make sense, but is that really his name, or is that just like a pseudonym? And just as his name states, he is a killer, an assassin. Yeah, okay. Just, why? The best at that. An assassin? Alright, now we have the picture card in our diddly D. but why would an assassin be involved in this? I guess they killed Corridor. Hitman style strangled him. So who is this Shelly to kill her? Also, why Shelly? Is it because you, know, you wanted to leave calling cards of shells? The killer is the name of a long-standing line of assassins. Long-standing? The name first appeared about a hundred years ago, I hear. Shelly is the professional name of the third heir to the De killer name. How are the assassins if this much is known about them. How do you even know he's the third heir of the name? So because his professional name is Shelly, he leaves cards of a shell on them? He has a habit of making sure to leave a card by the body of his victims. Why would he do something like that? We think it's a part of his duty to his clients. That way the clients actually know that he was the one who killed them. Is that why the killer is pissed off at this case? Because somebody, because Andrews r took away his card and framed on guard for it. And so Shelly the killer got so angry. He's like, I'm going to get this man acquitted of this crime because I'm the one who killed him, damn it. That's, that's honestly hilarious. That is honestly hilarious. His duty? If he leaves a card, then his clients can be assured it was he who killed the victim. It also serves as insurance against any charges being pushed onto his clients. I see. De Killer values the trust between his clients and himself above all else. Didn't... Didn't our client, uh, Matt on guard, only really take us on... After Shelly, after we dropped the killer's name, we said I think we mentioned the killer at one point in the first conversation with Matt, and that's when Matt allowed us to come on. So what if he did? What if Matt hired the assassin? Oh no! Because trust between him and his clients. And that's why, at the mere name drop of De Killer, Matt took us on because we are basically an extension of De Killer right now, and he trusts us with that. And maybe, maybe when he li is like using his like wrist communicator, he's not actually calling the like publisher 
or manager or whatever, he's actually calling the killer. And then, on top of that, that would also mean that his, like, unable to think for himself, like, persona is a facade. But maybe that's a, that's a possibility. That's a possibility we don't know exactly. It seems that this is one honorable assassin with a moral conscience. I guess that even honorable assassins can exist. So you think this assassin, you think he's the one who did the killing in this case? It would appear that way. The discovery of the card basically confirms it, wouldn't you agree? Shelly to killer, huh? I noticed something at the trial today. You were behaving in a very strange manner. Is something the matter? I guess I should just tell him. Maya, she's been kidnapped. Kidnapped? What does a kidnapper want? An acquittal. I see. I had no idea. I will prepare a rescue team as soon as possible and resolve this by tomorrow. Uh, really? Did you hear that, Mr. Nick? M Mr. Edgeworth is going to- Stop trying to console me, Edgeworth. I don't need your pity. Mr. Nick? There's no way you can find her. We don't have even a single lead to go on. There's only one way to save her. I- I have to get an acquittal somehow. It's the only way. Right? Listen, you need to know something. One corridor was killed by Shelley de Killer, and the client who ordered the job is Matt on guard, your own client. Well, they're spelling it out, which means that it's entirely possible that it's not actually him. It's entirely possible, but that's the problem. We have yet to meet other characters yet. The only characters directly tied into this crime is Juan Corrida, Adrian Andrews, Matt on guard, and the highly presumably deceased impacts. Hmm. So obviously, Juan couldn't have ordered a hit on himself. Andrews is out of the picture for the most part. Again, my brain slinks away to the possibility that Impact somehow faked her death. And that she's actually alive and might have ordered the hit on to Juan Corrida. It's possible because... Maybe during her faking her suicide, Juan Corda stole her, like, suicide note that was meant to, I guess, console Andrews, and Andrews then attempted suicide herself. So maybe all these, like, these two years later, Impacts decided to ha hire Shelly to kill her to both get revenge and I get revenge on Juan, maybe? It's too straightforward for Matt on guard to be the, like, hirer of Shelly to kill her, but at the same time, it could just be that plane, and the angle they're going with is now that you know that you, like, uh, now that you suspect that your client is the hirer of the assassin, what will you do? Please stop! I can't listen to you! I can't believe that. I see. Well, if you want to continue your investigation, you will need this. What is it? The hotel right now is restricted to police personnel only, as we're looking for any clues that might lead us to Shelley de Killer. But if you take this with you to the hotel, I'm sure they will let you enter. Letter of introduction received from Edgeworth allows Berber to freely investigate the crime scene. In any case, I must attend to the preparations for Maya's rescue team. We'll meet again if anything should happen. Now, if you'll excuse me. Mr. Nick, do you... Do you think Mr. Ungard hired an assassin? No way! I mean, he doesn't have a psych lock. Technically, he did say that he didn't... Actually, I forget how he worded it. I think he worded it something like... He has never killed anyone that includes Juan Corrida. So it could be that we need to ask him if he's hired an assassin, because technically that's not him killing him, that's him hiring someone else to do it. Yeah, I guess not. Maya, please. All I ask is you make it home safe and sound. 
Ah, we're back to the question mark thing. Last we saw was Maya escaping. <laughs> I guess even kidnappers can be a little clumsy. Clumsy enough to drop a card like this for me. And even though he said he was an assassin, I bet he's just making that up, like how Nick does with everything in court. Anyway, let's try this court trick. Uh, this co court trick? Let's try out this card trick with this card I just found. Sounds like I got the door open. Okay, time to go take a look around. It's entirely possible that... So we're returning to this, so we don't know when this is. Well, let's try to escape. <laughs> More question mark, question mark. What is this place? I've got a feeling I'm not in the hotel anymore. Are those videos over there? Well, I'll worry about that later. For now, I should be looking for clues. That way, I can show them to Sis and maybe get out of here. I automatically notice... The freaky deaky little bear, which was a lot like the bears in one corridor's room. Which is weird. Was it a psychological warfare thing where the uh, killer sent a bunch of bears to one corridor? Or could that have something to do with impacts? That's weird. What's a figurine doing on a sofa in a place like this? I think it's a bear. Oh, how cute. But it's got a lot of cuts and slits on it. I wonder if it's some kind of puzzle or something. Maybe the bears could have been... Maybe the bears could have been some kind of like... I'm trying to think of the word. A Trojan horse. Where some of the bears were sent in with like... I don't know, things hidden inside them, but... They, the game specifically drew attention that this bear has a lot of slits and cuts on it, as if it's a puzzle, which is odd. That's impacts. Okay, new idea just jumped into my head. What if her suicide wasn't a suicide and it was a Shelly to kill her? It's entirely possible that this Shelly to kill her gunned for Juan Corrida personally because... Hmm, I'm trying to think. Because if maybe he did take the, like, suicide note, but it wasn't a suicide note, it was Shelly DeKiller's calling card. That's a possibility. But we still don't know what Matt on guard's, like, dirty secret is that Juan Corrida was going to reveal to the public. Alright, that's another idea. It's entirely possible that maybe Matt on guard... Did hire Shelly to kill her? And maybe he hired Shelly to kill her to kill Impax? Like, a long time ago? But that wouldn't explain why her framed photo is here. In the presumed area of Shelly to killer's home. There's a lot of weirdness. This one freaking photo and that one freaking bear really just get my brain churning with ideas. Okay, more mysteries abound. It's a picture of a woman. She's kind of pretty. Hey, it looks like something's written here. Let's see. I think it says, With Love, Celeste. I bet this could be a clue. With Love, Celeste. Alright, so... I think that squarely throws out the idea of Celeste being a target. It might have something more to do with... Or maybe, hmm. Hmm. Another idea could be that these are mementos. That maybe Shelley DeKiller stole this photo of Celeste Impacts as a... Like a... 
a memento of that kill, and then the bear could also be a memento. But I'm leaning more towards the possibility of these being, like, actual personal items of the assassin. Oh, hey, it's a computer! I've never really, really used one before. Um, I have no idea where the power switch on this thing is. Drat! There goes my plan to use this to somehow get out of here. What is this thing? An antenna, I guess? And this is a VCR? There's sure a lot of electronic gadgets here. But what is an antenna doing here? Wow, I've never seen a TV this big before. Now, where's the power button? Hmm. Phooey, it's busted. I would so die a happy samurai fan. <laughs> if I ever got to see the nickel samurai on TV like this. Ah, I can't believe I just made a joke about dying, all things considered. It's so dark in here that I can barely see, but these kind of feel like videotapes, all of them. Just what kind of room is this? Uh, locked, of course. And it doesn't look like I can use the car to open this door. There's a little hole in the bottom of the door. If only it was a little skinnier, then maybe I'd be able to crawl through there. Oh, this simply won't... Oh, this simply will not do. I cannot have you wandering around at will. Yeah! It seems that your Mr. Wright is truly concerned about you. He is? For now, I will suggest you remain cooperative. If you cannot, there are ways in which I can help you. Ways, you mean? Dead men tell no tales is how the saying goes, right? Dead? I'm almost certain I told you on our first meeting. I am an assassin. No way. You're lying. I mean, an assassin? People are not always who they appear to be. Nick! This is just very weird. Alright, so that definitely clues in that Celeste Impacts is more important to this case than just being motivation for Andrews. It's possible that Celeste Impacts is Shelly the Killer, and she faked her death. It's possible that Celeste Impacts, I don't know, hired Shelly the Killer to fake her death somehow. And it's possible that Celeste Impacts was the target of Shelly the Killer, and Juan Corrida stole the calling card suicide note. I don't know, there's so many different ways this could go. Mr. Nick? Hmm? Oh, yes. Pearls? Got caught up in my thoughts about Maya's situation. Mr. Edgeworth has left, you know. I guess for now I have no choice but to believe in Mr. Ungard. But I think I should listen to his story one more time. All right. Let's get going, too. Okay. I definitely think that Wright should ask a more clear question. Like, did you have any role to play in the death of Juan Corrida? I'm sorry, but visiting hours are over for today. Aww. Ah, I have too many questions I need to ask. I'm sorry, but I'm Phoenix Wright, a lawyer for one of the... You're Mr. Wright, you say? Oh, yeah, there's a message here for you. A message? Why did my... I swear my voice sounded distorted to myself there. Yeah. It's from Matt on guard. Uh, here you go. What did he write? Is it something really important? I don't know. Well, let's see what it has to say. To Mr. Lawyer, dude, I got something really important to tell you. Why do I feel uneasy all of a sudden? Oh, Mr. Wright. So actually, I have a favor to ask you. I had this cat named Sho. Sho? Why'd I name it like, say it like that? I didn't put out a lot of food when I left the house, so he's probably pretty hungry. You think you could drop by my house and feed Sho for me, dude? The cat flap. The cat flap in the door. Oh boy. My house is just a little ways down from the hotel, right? Well, that would explain how the... Th th this is terrible! Let's hurry, we have to feed us cat! I'm sure per sh poor Shoe's stomach is growling by now. Yeah, I guess. Matt's note jammed into pocket. Client's request is a request. I guess I should go check up on his cat. 
I swear this is way the cat flap in the question mark question mark I'm gonna visit the other places just to be safe Wow everybody looks really busy with something or another hmm, they're probably strengthening the evidence for tomorrow's trial Hey, hurry up with that, will ya? Pass the victims list around. You gotta be kidding me. There's over a hundred people on here. Uh, Mr. Nick? Is Mr. On Guard really that big bad of a criminal? Actually, Pearls, never mind. It sounds like they're working on a different case. <laughs> Could he really be that much of a murderer? Kill that many people? All right now, Mr. Nick, let's go look for clues. We have to for Mystic Maya's sake. You shall not pass! <sighs> Miss Oldbag! Don't devalue my name and turn it into gasp, you spiky-headed pettifogger! Because of you, I've been made to look like the bad guy again! Although I did get a piece of gum from Edgy Boy, just as he promised. But I would have really with something much more bad, though I wanted Boy's heart! It's all your fault! You've awakened the wild beast inside of this old bag! Ah! And then she passed out! Uh, Miss Oldbag! Keep your hands off me! This helmet is airtight! No air gets in and our air gets out! Um, then why do you keep putting it on? Hmm, don't think you can get me to move this silly question. You're going to have to defeat me if you want to get by! I'm not hearing this. <laughs> Alright. I just, I don't want to go to the... I feel like that's the place it wants me to go. Um, <laughs> I still love this pose. Ha! You're a million light years too early to be asking me questions, whippersnapper! Looks like the only way I'm going to get any investigating done is to first do something about this kooky alien. Well, I guess I'll have to be like, hey. Oh, wait, wrong thing. <laughs> I can't see through this helmet. I see that look in your eyes. You stop thinking I'm an alien from outer space this instant. Hmm, maybe if I show her this letter I got from Edgeworth. Um, Miss Oldbag, if you would look at... What? Do you want me to look at this word, this piece of... Edgy poo. Ah, uh, is that a perfume pheromone d'amour I smell? Uh. Let's see here. Would you please allow this unsophisticated young person to conduct his investigation? Yours truly, Miles Edgeworth. Yours truly? Hmm, that man's good at flattery. Fine, but only because Edgy Poo said so, you understand? I just thought of something I have to do. Remember, no messing around. You do anything bad and I won't let you off the hook. It looks like she has strong feelings for Mr. Edgeworth. That may be, but you know nothing's going to come of it. That's so mean, Mr. Nick. Feelings are meant to be told and shared. Oh, every time we talk about love, I always end up with a handprint on my face somehow. Did she just, like, jump up twice her height to smack you in the face? Um, so anyway, let's continue on our investigation. Okay. <laughs> and then she's back to shoot ya! Ah! What? What now? What little thing. Before I forget, you can't go into On Guard's room today. Why? The police's main investigation team is going to be in there all day, you hear? I wonder if they're te the team in charge of investigating the... the... the Investigating the killer. So don't go in there. Sit one foot in there and you'll face the wrath of Windy Old Bag. She's a hilarious little person, isn't she? Looks like we're the only ones here. And yet, the hotel seems to be busy somehow. Probably because the police team is scouring for clues about the killer. Yeah, it's these fucking bears now. These bears are a harbor of evil. Hey, city boy! Lotta, you're still here. Reckon, of course! An investigative photographer eats his stops on her ability to step up the scoop, yeah? And this hotel just has that aura of mystery. You know, that something's always about to happen. But, do you have a camera? Reckon! A photographer's gotta have cameras out of the ear like corn to be a real pro, you know? So I'm hanging around here. Speaking of cameras and feeding the mouth, uh, do you have mine, you bread thief? Why can't you drop the thief thing already? Like, do we have hers? 
Um, oh, we can't even give it back. I wanted to give it back to you. I want to ask you about the night of the murder. What? You really gonna shell out the bucks for the info I got? Lotta, you were loitering in this hallway the night of the murder, were you not? Well, kinda, but... Brace yourself, Phoenix. Here it comes. I didn't exactly hang around here the entire time, you know. Followed a few stars around, got a few autographs, shook a few hands, had a soda pop with a few of them too. Looks like she wasn't here the entire time the night. The security lady also wasn't in the hallway the whole time either. I guess this means there's no one who can tell us who came and went that night. So, about the note that was inside your camera case. Oh, that diddy I wrote? Yeah, can I believe what you've written? You mean the stuff about on God shoving his manager lady onto Corda? Yeah. Uh, well, I reckon you best not be believe in that. What? Look, I sort of wrote that on the whim, you know, writing whatever came to mind. Whatever came to mind? Yeah, when you get down to it, it's just a lot of random bulldooters. Hey, what's with you? Why are you staring at me like my grandpa used to? Hmm. Hey, and why do you look like you suddenly got older too? Oh, wait. Hey, why do you look like you suddenly got older too? Or am I just shrinking here? Um. <laughs> ah, my baby. My $1,600 baby. What's with the red coated prosecutor anyhow? That guy told me it was evidence and refused to give it back to me. Well, that's kind of how it is. Hey, you're that Red Coat's friend, ain't you? So put in a good few words for me and get my camera back. You want me to do what? Listen, that'd be real good for about five hours, and I guarantee he'll give it back. Why don't you do your own dirty work? Well, I reckon it's time for me to get going. A tabloid photographer without a camera is just a tabloid, huh? Um, yeah, I guess so. Keep yourself together out there, you hear? I'm coming to see you in court tomorrow. Okay. See you then. And you too there, little one. Keep up the good work, okay? I'm okay. <laughs> Don't be picky about your food now. Okay. And make sure you do all your homework, you hear? Okay. And if you happen to find... Would you please just leave already? <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> just keeps giving small bits of like, hey, remember this child. Mm, so either he's into the bears... Or there's something weird about the bears. Hmm. Uh, uh, uh. Who's that? Mr. Nick! What is that otherworldly, ghastly moaning? Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> I hate evil ghosts! <laughs> I don't think it's a ghost. Maybe it's a demon? <laughs> Wendy, why are you in here? Excuse me? Watch who you're calling a demon brat. Ah! Zoinks! It's the alien! <laughs> now I almost want a Scooby-Doo Phoenix Wright crossover. Zoinks! It's the alien! Who are you calling an alien? <laughs> oh, it's just you, Miss Oldback. What are you doing here? What is wrong with young'uns today? I come, I came down here to pay my respects to my poor one, and you're disturbing me. Why do you have to be weird? Please talk to me about the night of the murder. Just one more time. I talked about it plenty at the trial. I was fooled, tricked, deceived by that fraud of a photographer in a note. She was loitering around here with the imbecile look on her face. With that imbecilic look on her face? Okay, got it. Now, hold on a second there, you little pipsqueak. If you're going to take notes, at least make me sound better than that. <laughs> oh, all right. Now I've seen everything. But you know, I was working on that night, too. Doing my job, minding my own business. So it's not like I had time to be standing around here the whole night. I was wondering if you could tell me a bit more about Mr. Corrida. He was the most popular star, you know. Especially where it counts in my book. But I heard he was lagging behind in the polls against On Guard. Um, well, that's just a recent thing. Bad luck and all that, you know. But he was going to become an even bigger star than he used to be. Look, just look at this mountain of presents. It's a show of the mountain of feelings all his fans had for him. Yeah, the mountain is pretty big and certainly nothing to shake a stick at. Mr. Nick? Hmm? What is it, Pearls? The presents, they're all bears, right? She's got a point. There isn't a single thing here that isn't a bear. 
All of Mr. Corda's presents from his fans seem to be bears. Oh, that's because you can't think of one without thinking about bears. Bears? Why bears? You don't know, when my dear Juan was training, he fought bare-handed with a bear. He refused to give in and let the bear win, but after the fight, they became friends. Well, what a heartwarming story. Look, it's just like in those young people's dramas. I can see those two tuckered out, down by a river going, <laughs> You, you sure can fight. You too, bub, you too. D did all that really happen? It's in his biography, bub. What a load of crock. So ever since then, fans have been giving him bears as presents. Yeah, nice. Bears. Hmm, do I have anything? You know this card. I don't have anything to say to delinquents like you. She's climbing up like the gold clam she is. Please, anything would be helpful. Well, then how about I tell you my measurements? <laughs> um, no, that's okay, really. She really doesn't like you, does she, Mr. Nick? I know, I know. That is disturbing. So he fought a bear barehanded. If that's true, then, like, there's no way that a normal person would be able to overpower him. If that is indeed true and he wrestled a bear, like, no way is anybody overpowering him. He would have easily... He would have tore his handkerchief off his own neck before he had strangled him. Hmm, sure is dark. I'll go turn on a light. All right, not at all... Well, then again... Could be that room right there. Could be that room. Fear. Wow. So this is what a star's house looks like. Must be nice to be rich. Come on, Mr. Nick, let's go find Shoe the kitty cat. Shoo! Well, the cat's real. That's adorable. So I guess this is Shoe. <laughs> what a lovely cat. Hello, Shoe. Meow, meow. <laughs> the cat seems to like pearls. Pardon me. May I help you with something, Mr... Oh, uh, we're lawyers, actually. I'm Mr. Ungard's lawyer. The Masters... Then you must be Mr. Wright. Uh, yes. Ah, it's a pleasure to meet your wonderful self. I am the family butler, John Doe. Ah, ha, ha, you sneaky little fuck. Nice to meet you. And the cat. So, that confirms that D Shelley the Killer is based out of On Guard's house, but... The question is now, why would On Guard have me go feed his cat if he has a butler? <laughs> so, like, if he figured that Shelly DeKiller, posing as a butler, was indeed going to be living at his house, like, I maybe he doesn't trust the, the killer to care about his cat? You must know all sorts of things about Mr. On Guard, right? Honestly, sir, I don't believe my master is capable of such a foul deed as murder. And, uh, anything else? No, not especially. It's not appropriate for a lowly servant to speak of the master or his affairs. Hmm, how typically butler-like, as it were. Mr. Doe, how long have you ser uh, served at this residence? Well, sir, I would have to say maybe about one year. And, uh, anything else? No, not especially. It's not appropriate for a lowly servant of myself to speak of his affairs. And you know, I would have thought Mr. Ungard... Uh, I would have thought Mr. Ungard the kind to have a maid over a butler. That's a very cute cat you've got there. It is my duty to take care of him. The master rather fancies shoe. And, uh, anything else? No, not especially. It is not appropriate. <laughs> to speak of the family cat! Well, then I guess I don't need this piece of scrap paper anymore. Well, I'm afraid I must ask you. I must take my leave of you now. Oh, we should have probably uh, we should probably be going ourselves. Ah, so young and yet already so accomplished. A master of law. But there's also a lot to be proud of in being butler, in charge of the house and all. Thank you for the compliment, sir. People are not always who they appear to be. Now, if you'll excuse me. I almost feel sorry for the cat. Having an assassin look over him. 
Oh, there's a giant cooking hearth here. That's actually a fireplace. How are they different, Mr. Nick? You know, I've never actually seen a hearth before, come to think of it. You should come and visit Faye Manor. Then I'll show you, show you one when you do. Why does he have a motorcycle in his house? A giant bicycle is flying through the air. That bicycle, Pearls, is one where you don't have to pedal and it moves on its own. Really? Wow. But sorry to disappoint you, it can't fly. Aw, that's too bad. Is this just to, like, link everything together so you... Like, it feels like it's now going too hard. Like, just like how there was too much evidence that Matt on guard was going against... Like, uh, too much evidence that Matt on guard killed Corrida. There's now too much evidence that... He's working with the killer. I wonder if famous stars drop by and sit around and have a good time. In any case, I don't really belong here, do I? Ah, what is with me and feeling inferior today? There's another door over there. You shouldn't go wandering off over there, Mr. Nick. Yeah, yes, Pearls. I know how Maya feels when I tell her to stop playing around. There's a small door at the bottom of this bigger door, Mr. Nick. I bet it's for Mr. On Guard's cat to use. Oh, you mean shoe. The door. It's locked tight. Well, I guess that's to keep nosy people like me from entering it. Hmm, there seems to be like the sil uh, steel samurai, the pink princess, and I wonder what that other head is. Ah, there are masks here. Yeah, that one in the middle is the steel samurai. The ones next to that are the pink princess and the evil magistrate. They fought many battles against the backdrop of neo-old Tokyo. Wow, you really know a lot about the Steel Samurai, Mr. Nick. I don't know whether to laugh or cry that I know more about that show than a kid. That's extra interesting. Well, now what? I'm going to go back to the detention center and see if anything's new. There's nothing new. Maybe I have to go back to Right and Go? Hmm. Maybe back to the Hottie Clinic. Nope. Then we have to go back to the hotel. Maybe in the Voa La Hall? No. Maybe in the hallway? No. Maybe in Corda's hotel room? I'm Uncle Bear and I say it's barely 8 o'clock. What is that infernal? Oh. It had Pearl on, so I thought she was saying that. What is that infernal racket? It's one of the presents going off. Sounds like it's already 8 p.m. Way past your bedtime. Uh, that startled me. I thought I was going to die for a second. 8 p.m. That's the time when the award ceremony ended that night, remember? Time sure flies. Hard to believe it's been two days since the ceremony. The transceiver. Hello? Hello? This is not a phone. Maya, how is Maya? You haven't heard her, have you? It seems you were not able to fulfill your end of the bargain, Mr. Attorney. I have heard the news, so would it seem my present did you no good? No! Mystic Maya! Mystic Maya! One more day, please! All I ask is for one more day! I... I'll get a not guilty verdict for sure this time, please! I suppose if I must, I need that acquittal more than anything else, after all. Please, please let Maya say something. I want to hear that she's all right. All right. Then, a little. What is with the static all of a sudden? Hello? Hello? It seems bad. Connect. Damn it. Did the transceiver just suddenly break? Excuse me. So maybe Maya mucked about with the uh, transceiver? What happened? I don't know. All of a sudden it became nothing but static. <laughs> Mystic Maya! Why did the transceiver suddenly break like that? I should probably have an electronics expert look at it. The sooner the better. That's actually funny. Hey, old bag, do you know Transceiver? Ah. Would be kind of funny if she was an expert on it. Hmm. 
maybe would gumshoe count? Ah, gumshoe seems to be gone. Oh no, he's here. Hey, welcome back, pal. I thought I'd make you a little something for dinner. Th that's nice, thanks. A rich man's luxuries, full course meal. Out of a can, that is. I'm sorry you went through all the trouble to cook, but I don't have time to eat. Oops, looks like you don't have a can open, the pal. You've gotta be kidding, and here I thought he had already whipped something up. Oh, I know, there's one way I know how to be helpful. Ask me about anything you want, pal, go ahead. Well, since he's here and offering, I wonder what I should try asking him about. Do you know anything about electronics? The transceiver? Oh, Mr. Nick, you should ask Mr. Scruffy Detective about that thing. What thing? Oh yeah, this thing just up and broke all of a sudden. It... it broke, pal. When I was talking to the kidnapper, it just suddenly broke into static. Look, it sounded like this. I don't hear any static, pal. Huh? Maybe it fixed itself? That's strange. I'm sure it was making a loud static noise. Hmm, maybe. Maybe what? Maybe it was electromagnetic interference, pal. Electromagnetic interference? So one of the bears might be holding something that was mucking with the signal. Um, so what is electromagnetic interference? It's something that happens when a radio wave gets mixed up with another signal, pal. Oh, when you put it that way. I don't understand what you're talking about. Like, for example, when a cell phone goes off next to a computer screen, the stuff on the screen gets kind of fuzzy and starts acting funny, right? Huh? Computer? Um, it's like... Um, it's like when you use the dryer next to the TV and the screen start looks looking weird. Oh, yes, the TV does that. Hmm, so that's what you're talking about. She seems amazingly happy at being able to understand this. So the room you were in when the interference... Uh, so the room you were in when that interference to the transceiver happened, there's gotta be something that's there that's sending out very strong radio waves, pal. Something like, mm, like a listening device or something. Ah, hey, speaking of that, where were you when it happened? We were in Mr. Corda's room, the scene of the murder. What? That's it, I'm gonna sneak into the precinct and get a bug sweeper. I'll meet you at the crime scene later, pal, all right? Uh, wait, Gumshoe. Oh yeah, baby, it's investigating time. I'm on fire, pal. My fingers are inching to go. Yeah! We should be going too, Mr. Nick. All right, let's go. That's... <laughs> He's gonna break into the precinct and steal a bug sweeper. That is hilarious. But that would make sense that one of the bears, at least, was sent by the killer as a listening device then. Hey! You're finally here, pal! Sorry to keep you waiting. Do you have the, um, bug sweeper? Um, well, you see, I got busted trying to sneak in, pal. And suddenly I'm staring at the precinct doors. From the outside, I mean, so, yeah, I couldn't get one out of the police bugs. What do you mean you couldn't get one? We need that item! Hey, calm down, pal. Didn't say I didn't get one. That's not the police's. Wow, so this is a bug sweeper? It looks a little broken. Hey, this was made when I was in elementary school, pal. Oh, by who? Me, of course. Ah, uh, seeing this show brings back memories. Hey, don't look down on it, pal. Sure, it looks a little beat up, but I put my heart and soul into building this puppy here. Your heart and soul? It'll work. Trust me, pal. It'll do the job, but... But? But you can't set the sensitivity. So it's going to beep at anything that gives off electromagnetic waves. But isn't it better that way? <laughs> well, anyway, since I brought it all this way, might as well give it a whirl, right, pal? I'm getting that sinking feeling. Okay, now I'll tell you how to use this baby. There's a listening device or some other sort of bug hidden in this room, pal. So we're gonna find it, right? All right. Now first, let's turn the sweeper on. Next, move the sweeper around to give the room the real thorough looky-see, pal. The sweeper will let you know how strong of a signal it's picking up. So keep an eye out, okay? Once you find something that's giving off a lot of radio waves, press space to lock onto it. There's a lot of things here that's gonna give off radio waves, so let's take a good look at anything and everything that seems suspicious. Okay, pal? 
All right, I'm gonna go stand outside and keep an eye out. Give me a yell if you find the bug, got it, pal? Lamp, check, listening device, nope. There's a lot of lamps in this room, aren't there, Mr. Nick? Yeah. And they're all on. You shouldn't do that, Mr. Nick. Don't you know that's wasteful? Uh, yeah, I'll be more conscientious from now on. Sorry. Alright, so this is actually kind of interesting. Ah, what a lovely bear! <laughs> ah, this must be one of those fancy bear-shaped toy robots. It's a robot? It's a real robot? Yeah, it's a real one. Mr. Nick! Yes? How many horsepowers is it? How many horsies? Horsies? Um, well, look, it's a bear, so, uh, um... <laughs> A cell phone. Nope, no bugs in here. A cell phone? What? Don't tell me you don't know what a cell phone is. I'm sorry, I've never seen one before. Oh, she mentions it. My cell phone couldn't get any reception while I was staying in Kurain Village. And Pearls has never lived outside of that village, so, well, I guess I can't say it's impossible to live without one. The radio is on and playing something. Oh, it's Kid's Question Corner. Professor, Professor, why is the Earth round? Yes, why is it, Mr. Nick? Why don't you listen to the radio program a little more, Pearls? <laughs> hmm. What's this? It sort of looks like a hot water pot, but... Oh, well, it's kind of like a hot water pot, I guess. But instead of hot water, coffee comes out. Really? This pot can do that? Um, is there a pot that orange juice comes out of? I don't think there's anything like that, Pearls. Sorry. Well, it certainly looks like an alarm clock. What's wrong? Why do you look troubled? I just can't imagine the listening device being inside this alarm clock. It just, um, sort of reminded me of something that happened a long time ago. Oh. Well, anyway, it looks like the listening device isn't here. It's a plain old calculator. It says 50 on it. Maybe he was calculating his allowance? A whole 50 cents? Uh, maybe if he was a spirit medium. <laughs> What's this? It's a small video camera. No listening devices in this gizmo. Everyone's trying to make everything smaller and smaller lately, aren't they, Nick? That's what it seems. But I want to grow bigger and bigger. Well, eating only vegetables isn't going to help you there. You have to eat meat, too. There's no listen device in the notebook computer, huh? Um, what's a notebook computer? Do you know what a notebook is? Yes, it's a small book of paper so you can write on, so? Well, that thing is like a notebook in a way. It's basically a small laptop. Um, Mr. Dick, what's a laptop? <laughs> she doesn't know anything. What? This is... This is just a giant stuffed teddy bear, right? It's the biggest one I've ever seen. Hey, so did you guys find it yet? The listening device, I mean. No, not yet, but this bear's eye is. Let's see, let's see. A perfectly normal stuffed bear with some really strong radio waves. Sounds like you found the device to me, pal. Let's dig this big fella's eye out and see what we've got. No, you can't. Such, such a violent act. Oh! No! That's... It's a miniature camera, and it looks like there's more. There's a transmitter and a timer. A what emitter? A transmitter, pal. Oh, is this more of that high-tech stuff? So this tiny thing is a camera? Yep, it's a pinhole CCD camera, pal. It's a small, high-grade video camera mostly used in security systems. So it's a video camera. It runs on a battery, which comes with it... Uh, comes with it in a set. But there's no videotape in this camera. This is only the camera part here, pal. The tape recorder with the tape inside is somewhere else. Somewhere else? The footage is changed into radio waves and then it's sent to the recorder. So it's sort of like a TV broadcast, isn't it? 
Hey, you know you're right. Spy camera added. Set to record the victim's room from eight for one hour. Hmm. Well, that would explain how the killer knew that uh, Andrews was framing uh, on guard. So, what is this transmitter? It's a device that sends the footage the camera took to a specific destination. It's like a video version of the listening device, pal. It looks like it's attached to a small clock-like thing. Oh, that's a timer, pal. You can set it to return the camera on and record at a certain time with it. You can set it for a certain time? Yep, let's see. This looks like it will set to start at 8 p.m. and go for one hour. 8 p.m.? That was the time the award ceremony ended. There's no date set, so it's been recording every night, I guess. But Mr. Detective, how long has this bear been here? Um, I'm pretty sure it's been here since the night of the murder. Then... then maybe... Maybe this camera caught the murder on tape! What? And if you think about the angle the bear is at, it's bound to have a clear shot of the whole crime, pal! Transmitter added to the diddly D. So there was a camera in this bear's eye. It was disguised as a present. And I'm sure it was here on the night of the murder, pal. It's pretty big, so it stands out pretty well in my mind. But who gave Mr. Corrida this present? I, uh, don't know, pal. But this means that someone out there has got a video of what happened here that night. Isn't there any way we can find out who that person is? It's impossible, pal. Radio waves can be sent almost anywhere, so there's no real way to find out. Oh. Is there really no way to find out? Stuffed bear added to the court record. I got it! What? Hey, pal, let me borrow this mini camera for a bit. What are you going to do? I'm going to go around and s to the electronic shops and see if I can find who bought it. But, but that's impossible. I mean, it's already 9 p.m. Leave it to me. Even if I have to search all night, I'll find your man, pal. Oh, yeah, baby. It's investigating time. I'm on fire, pal. My fingers are itching to go. Yeah! I hope this continues into the third game. Trials and Tribulations. He's gone. Yeah. Mr. Scruffy Detective sure is a nice man. He's pushing himself so hard, all for Mystic Maya's sake. It's a mystery how you always manage to do things in the most inefficient ways, right? Ah! You'll have to excuse me. I heard your conversation just now. Edgeworth! What are you doing here? A rescue team has been created and deployed. I can't say I'm optimistic, but we have to move forward one step at a time. I see. Thanks. Don't thank me yet. We still have to find her. Hmm. So there was a spy camera hidden inside this stuffed animal, huh? You are one lucky man, right? Do you know this stuffed bear, little girl? Um, I have no idea. Hmm. <laughs> of course not. The maker of this bear is a very expensive luxury brand from overseas. It's completely handmade, and only a small number of these are exported here. What? The camera and transmitter that Scatterbrain Detective took with him are dead ends. Things like those can be bought anywhere. However, this bear is different. By tracking how it got into this country, this bear can tell us who the buyer is. C can you really do that? Mr. Nick, can he really? Well, I guess so. Hmm, it's 9 p.m. I think I can still make it in time. I'll be taking this for now. I'm sure you have other things you have to do. Stuff bear snatched up by Edgeworth. See you soon, right? I, now I just love the visual of Edgeworth dragging the bear out of the room. But wait! What? Why are you doing this? I have no interest in explaining myself to someone who cannot comprehend. But besides that, right, until court reconvenes tomorrow, you should concern yourself with this question. Who was the person that murdered Juan Corrida? The real killer. Do you really still think it was Adrian Andrews? To be honest, I don't know anymore. You still have a little time left. Find the truth, right? Everything begins with the truth. Juan Corrida's real killer. Miss Andrews passed. The kidnapper whose sole condition is an acquittal for Mr. On Guard. 
And this card, Shelly the Killer. Maya, the only way I can save you now is to find all the answers to this case tonight. I don't understand what your real intentions are, Edgeworth. But as you said, all I can do for now is find the truth. It would be hilarious if... It would be hilarious if Detective Gumshoe... Well, I guess he's not a detective anymore. If Gumshoe managed to actually do something good and find us information. And we're just beginning again. <coughs> It's past 9 p.m. already, isn't it? I wonder... I wonder if Mr. Edgeworth has already found Mystic Maya. No. These things take time. I'd say probably not. The police are professionals, Pearls. They'll find her. And if we can win a not guilty verdict tomorrow, then everything will be okay. You're right. So the real person who killed Mr. Corridor was... That assassin, Mr. Shelley DeKiller, right? And the card Miss Andrews found at the crime scene seems to be proof of that. But if that's the case, then a new question comes to mind. Who is the one that hired the killer to begin with? Who is his client? You mean, who asked for the murder? That person didn't want their dirty their own hands and blood. But whoever this client is, they're still a killer. Who... who could have hired the assassin? Do you think it was Miss Andrews? No. I wonder, but if she was the client, then why go through the effort to stab the body, or stab the knife into the corpse herself? But if Miss Andrews wasn't the client, then no, it can't be. Matt on guard himself? If Mr. On guard really did hire the assassin... Then he's not innocent at all. Far from it, he would be guilty of the crime. But, but it can't be Mr. On guard, right? I mean, when we first talked with him... Mr. On Guard, I'd like to ask you one more question. Did you kill Mr. Juan Corrida? All right, just so we're clear, dude. I didn't kill anyone, and that includes Juan Corrida, okay? I wonder if that would include assassin, like hiring an assassin. I didn't see any Cyclops at that time. Actually, that reminds me. Did you remember something, Mr. Nick? Yeah, something Miss Andrews said at the trial today. She said something interesting. Um, so what is this interesting thing? Oh, that's right. You didn't hear it, did you, Pearls? Juan had bet everything on the Jam and Ninja this year. And if he lost the Grand Prix, he was going to make sure Matt was going down with him. That's what he thought, anyway. It looked like somehow Juan had, got, had, a, had in his hands a secret so powerful that it would destroy Matt's acting career had it been revealed. Mr. On Guard's secret? What is this secret? I don't know yet, but for now, let's think about it this way. Mr. Corda was going to reveal this secret. That means... Mr. On Guard had plenty of motive to have Mr. Corda silenced. Which means we have to meet with Mr. On Guard. There's no way around it now. But the question is... Can we even do that? It's nine... Wow, it's really getting late, isn't it, Mr. Nick? Yeah, it's past 9 p.m. already. But we still have some things to prepare for tomorrow's trial. It's still a matter of the secret Mr. Corda held about Mr. On Guard and Miss Andrews' real intentions. These two are th these are two things I must know tonight. But aren't visiting hours over at the detention center? Hmm. I'm sure we'll think of something, Pearls. Don't you worry. Will we? I don't think we will. But that still also begs a question of that other little bear that the killer had. I wonder if that means anything. Hey, wait! What is it, Whippersnapper? All I know is nothing that has anything in it to do with you is ever good. Like just now, I was handed this strange device for who knows what reason. And I was told to use it to search the whole hotel. That's the bug sweeper, isn't it? The one Gumshoe made. I don't know, and frankly, I don't care, but the request came from Edgy Poo, so... Edgeworth? And he said... If you feel angry, direct your anger at the unsophisticated lawyer. So I'm going to feel free to direct all my anger towards you! Ah, uh, gee, thanks a bundle, Edgeworth. What a pal you are! 
This is absolutely top secret, so you better keep it to yourselves. I heard they found a spy camera hidden in one of the prisons. Hmm, very interesting. I'm sure it was, you know. It was to catch poor one in the middle of scandalous meeting. Scandalous? What's that? It means, well, you know, that gossip, that gossip that's been going around about my dear one. Oh, you mean that thing about Miss Andrews? I'm sure she must have had some reason for getting close to Mr. Corrida. I'll let you in on another secret, youngin. I know who planted that spy camera. It was that obnoxious puffy-haired photographer girl. The nerve of some people. Spying on people by herself as if it wouldn't... As if I wouldn't want to see it for myself, too. Wow, that alien actually admitted her true intentions for a change. I don't know what you're thinking exactly, but I can bet it's nothing good. But I didn't say anything. So, you want to know about Juan and that manager, right? Actually, as I hear it, they were something of a refreshing pair, those two. Oh? I tell you, Juan really welcomed that manager with open arms, I heard. That manager? Who are you talking about? You don't know? That manager woman Juan had. It's a shame that she killed herself, though. Oh, you're talking about Miss Celestin Pax, Miss Andrew's mentor, right? Yes, yes, that's the one. That Celeste girl. She was supposed to get married, you know. Married? You mean to Mr. Corridor? Ah, really, you young kids today don't know anything, do you? That girl Celeste killed herself three days after their marriage announcement. Three days after their marriage announcement? What in the... Why would Miss Impax want to kill herself? She was going to get married. Well, that's because she was thrown away, you see, by Juan. What? But they were going to get married, right? They promised each other, right? They held a grand announcement session, but three days later, Juan suddenly canceled their marriage. Is that true? It was in the weekly magazines. But, but why? Why did he do that? That was not in the magazines, unfortunately. I see. That night after Juan called off the wedding, that manager, Celeste, killed herself. How terrible. I wonder what happened between those two. Well... Dark. Well, we have more information. Let's go to the hotel lobby, I guess. On that night, there must have been at least a few hundred people here. I guess the police are done with their questioning and investigating. Looks like things here in the lobby have finally calmed down. We can go back if we wanted. Let's go back! Because why not? Home invasion! It looks like no one's around. Um, what happened to the person that stuffed the... That, with the stuffed teddy face? Oh, she must mean that butler with the stitches in his face. Shoo! Meow! Well, there you are. I guess you're still awake, huh, Shoo? Adorable cat. Nothing better happen to this cat, or I will be angry. <laughs> Come on, let's play! I wonder if that butler, Mr. Doe, is already asleep or not. There's another door over there. You shouldn't go wandering. Small door. I bet it's for Mr. Ongard. Hmm. It's locked tight. Well, I guess. There doesn't seem to be anything else. Maybe this picture? Oh, there's a giant clock. Oh, no. It's the same thing. I thought it... Uh, I already thought something was weird when my brain wanted to say clock. Well, let's go to the Criminal Affairs Department. It feels... It feels sort of tense in here, doesn't it, Mr. Nick? Yeah, it does. I wonder if something happened. You're Mr. On Guard's lawyer, right? Uh, yes, sir. Well, we finally found just the person we've been looking for. A real decisive witness. A decisive witness? You mean for the On Guard case? We're taking the witness's statement right now. Gotta hand it in to Mr. Edgeworth. What's Edgeworth up to now? Who is this witness? I think you know this person quite well, Mr. Lawyer. Mr. Nick? Between the kidnappers' demand and now this, I can't see any way to win here. Oh, yeah. Mr. Edgeworth wanted me to tell you something. He did? Even though visiting hours are long over at the detention center, he wanted me to grant you special permission to so you can go there. What? I've already called them, so they know. Go on, go talk to your heart's content. Thank you very much. This is such good news, Mr. Nick. Go talk to your heart's content. It's 
Sounds like the police are pretty sure they have tomorrow's trial in the bag. Well, that gives us some stuff to do. I'm sure they must have transferred Miss Andrews here by now. So that means that both Mr. Neron Guard and Miss Andrews are in this detention center. Now then, whose story do I want to hear? Let's start with Andrews. I hope it's not like a pick one and done thing. Mo, it's you. I'm sorry to be visiting at such a late hour, but there are a few questions I absolutely have to ask you tonight. Me? I thought your client was Matt. I'm sure Miss Andrews knows something. She can't be clueless about this secret Mr. Corda and Miss on had on Mr. Ungard. I'd like to ask you about Mr. Matt Ungard, if you don't mind. Mr. Wright, you still don't know, do you? The real him, I mean. You seem to bear a lot of resentment towards Mr. Ungard. If that's the case, then why did you become his manager? And why would you become intimate with his rival? That has nothing to do with this case. Nothing. About Celeste Impacts. I'd finally put her death behind me. And now, thanks to you, it's all come back to the surface. I... I'm sorry. Yes, I was shocked by her suicide. And it's true that when I heard the rumor that Juan was the one who had hidden her suicide note, I began to draw close to him. I wanted to get her suicide note back and to burn it. You wanted to burn it? But why? I didn't want it to spread like just another piece of gossip. But I never held any murderous intent towards Juan. I would never do something so stupid. A suicide note, huh? I wonder what it said. Why did you try to frame Mr. On Guard? That's simple. Because he's the killer, that's why. Isn't it the duty of every good citizen to inform the police? But, but, there had to be another way. The police are excellent at fu doing their job, so they'd figure it out, right? Yes, they're so good that they couldn't figure out that the real truth behind Insolette's death. Miss Andrews. Well, um, I know you're not the type of person to do something without a reason. So please tell me why you did what you did. Revenge. Huh? Did you just say something just now? Ah, oh boy! Only one lock, though. A psych lock, huh? Don't you understand yet? You're not my lawyer. To, to be honest, you're more like my enemy. But... I'm sure I just heard Miss Andrews say revenge. Well, let's see if we have the ability to unlock the Cyclock. It's only one. But we still might not have the evidence for it. Can you please tell me why you framed Mr. Ungard for the murder? I've already told you countless times. It's because I thought Matt was the killer. No, that's not it. I know you have personal reason to dislike Mr. Ungard. Miss Andrews, you may think I didn't hear it, but I know you said something earlier. You said revenge. So you are saying I was taking my revenge out on Matt and that's why? What an absurd idea. I I don't have anything I w I don't have anything I want to take revenge for. Miss Andrews, a woman who lives by being dependent on other people. There is something or someone in her past that would make her take revenge. Obviously Celeste. Celeste? There's only one catalyst that could cause such strong feelings and even revenge. And that's Miss Impax's suicide. What are you trying to say? Celeste was Juan's manager. On top of that, the one who hit her suicide note was also Juan. What does all this have to do with Matt? You're right. You haven't mentioned him. Yet. But for you to hate Mr. On Guard... It would mean that he must have had some relation to Miss Impax and her suicide. Can you explain to me this relation between Celeste and Max? I don't think I can. I do not believe that I can. I don't think I have enough evidence yet. I should investigate and gather more evidence before trying. Oh, Mr. Wright, please, you have to help me! Uh, uh oh, oh, Powers? M Mr. Powers! What happened? Why are you here? I, 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 uh, you see, I got roped into this somehow. What? And now I'm going to testify at tomorrow's trial. So the decisive witness 
is Mr. Powers? I was take talking with a detective until a little while ago and was on my way home. When all of a sudden, you there, you're under arrest, and I was brought back here. Oh. They said my face and whole self in general looked suspicious or something. Well, I guess I can see what they thought you looked suspicious. Uh, I'm just a normal guy on an exercise show for kids. Is that a crime? So about this testimony you're giving, what are you going to talk about? Uh, I really don't know yet. But it sounds like I... I saw something pretty important from what they tell me. You saw something important? What was it? Uh, well, the detective told me not to talk about it. You can't tell anyone, and especially not that lawyer, he said. Who do you think is that lawyer the detective was talking about? I'm gonna take a wild guess and say it's me. It, yeah, you got it. Mr. Nick, Mystic Maya and myself are your only, are your only two allies in this whole world, but it's alright. Ouch, I don't really have a lot of friends, do I? <laughs> this is going to do a lot of damage to Matt, you know. Because he's go got that refreshing like a spring breeze image mo going. But what does he really like? Well, let's see. Matt's always been kind of a player with women. He would never really turn a pretty face away, if you know what I mean. He'd always say, it's just a game to justify himself. What? How horrible! It's unforgivable! Oh, sorry, didn't mean to offend you. But, you know, he said once that there's only one person in the world who won't swoon over me. One person who wouldn't swoon over him? His manager, you know, Miss Adrian Andrews. Why is Mr. Power suddenly looking kind of energetic? Ah, uh, you see, I'm actually a sucker for gossip. I mean, celebrities in their world have this dazzling sort of image, right? A dazzling... A dazzling sort of image? But aren't you a part of the whole dazzle, Mr. Powers? No, I'm more of a hairy, sweaty, smelly, brutish kind of guy, you see? But it's okay, really. I get to hear plenty of gossip about a lot of the other... S other stars around me as things happen. Well, that's true. Oh, hey! So did you hear about this yet? About Miss Andrew's mentor and her suicide? You mean Miss Impax? We heard something about how her wedding was cancelled. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I thought about it a little the other day, about that mysterious death. Hey, Mr. Wright, why don't you ask me about that? Go on, go ahead. Mr. Powers has charged up. His skin is practically glowing with electricity. Hey, so you have, have you heard this? Celeste left a suicide note. And they say that Juan went and hid it. We heard about that in court today. But there wasn't any actual proof that she had left a note. Well, this is what I think. I think that something bad was written on that note. Something bad for Juan, that is. Something bad for Mr. Corrida? Why do you figure so? Well, before she died, Celeste talked with a few of her friends. And she said, It looks like I got caught up with a truly insidious man. A truly insidious man? Did she mean Mr. Corrida by that? Well, there's no one else that fits the bill, right? And that would be reason enough for him to hide the suicide note. I see. Well, thanks. Oh, that's some good info. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. On Guard and Miss Andrews, they're both at the detention center right now. There's still some things I don't understand or know, I'm sure. I have to get the two of them to tell me everything. So I'm going to save, and then I'm going to head to the detention center and talk to On Guard. On Guard. Dude, it's Mr. Wright. I hope you can get me off the hook tomorrow. I'm counting on you. I hope so, too. Edgeworth just dropped a bombshell on me by saying that Juan Corrida was killed by an assassin and that the assassin's client is this man, Matt On Guard. What's wrong? Mr. On Guard, there is something I must know with 100% certainty. You seem kind of different. You're totally not like his usual lawyer dude self. It's because I'm now worried about you. Um, about the press conference. You mean the one where Juan was gonna dress up as the Nickel Samurai? Yeah, I heard a little more about it from Miss Andrews. It looked like somehow Juan had his, in his hands a secret so powerful that it would destroy Matt's acting career had it been revealed. Could you please fill me in on what this secret is, please? 
Jesus Christ. I knew this was coming. Mr. Nick, don't tell me. Cyclox. You said a secret, right? But I don't have any idea what it is. Do you, dude? Did you know about Mr. Corrida and Miss Andrew's relationship? Well, it's all over the tabloids, dude. Ah, but I don't know any po any of the details, if that's what you mean. Look, how many times do I have to tell you? I don't care what one did with his life. Miss Andrews. She had a purpose in mind when she started seeing Mr. Corrida. Her mentor was Miss Cor Mr. Corrida's manager. And Miss Andrews is going to get Miss Celeste Impacts' suicide note from him. Celeste? Does that jog any memories? Dude, I suddenly just got totally hungry. You up for a pizza, my treat? Um, Mr. Nick, what's a pizza? Is it some kind of pea, like green peas? Let's go eat one later, okay? Ah, uh, I got cut off by the pizza dude at the shop. That's too bad. Well, how about we get our minds off this topic and talk about something else, okay? Mr. Ungard, are you connected to Miss Impact's suicide in some way? Can I talk to you about impacts? Mr. On Guard? Dude, I know you asked, I asked you to be my lawyer and all, but I don't think I have to tell you anything and everything. Um, what do you mean by that? It just means I don't have to tell you everything and everything, dude. About this person. H he's... He's your butler, Mr. Doe, right? We met him at your mansion. Oh, yes, that's right. He's a pretty cool dude who can do lots of things. He takes real good care of me. Hmm. I don't think I have the evidence necessary to bust open that, but we can at least try a little bit. See what activates first. Now, let's hear what this secret of yours is. What if Mr. Corda had been successful in his plan? What would he have disclosed? I told you before, dude, I don't know. I don't know anything about Juan, okay? Look, Mr. Wright, I can keep on saying it until I'm blue in the face, but I totally didn't pay Juan any attention the whole time that night. I mean, come on, I was in the middle of a nap. Don't lie to me. Huh? I know you paid close attention to Mr. Corda, especially on that night. But I don't have the diddly D with me. That stuff. I don't think I have enough evidence yet. Hmm. Well, we're gonna glance around more, see if what we can find. Hey! The Steel Samurai music! Mr. Nick, your phone! I don't like the sound of this ringtone right now. It sounds kind of ominous. It's probably just your imagination. You should really pick it up, Mr. Nick, it could be important! Hello? We've got big problem, pal! W what's wrong? I'm on my way to your office right now! Okay. Wait a second, why is he coming here? It's terrible! I don't know what to say, pal! It's the end! I'm saying I'm gonna... Oh. I got it faster than I thought. Um, hey. No time to relax now, pal! I'm confused as anything here! Well, what happened? We got him! We know who bought the spy camera! Huh? Th this quickly? And this bear's what gave them away, pal! The bear. I figured it out, pal. I figured out that we should have been looking into the bear instead of the camera! Um, but Mr. wasn't it Mr. Edgeworth? Shh, pearls. And? Go on. There's only one person who bought one of those bears who related to this crime! Who is it? Who could be so rude as to spy on another person in their room? Mad on God. Huh? Mad on God, your client. That's who, pal. Here I thought things couldn't get any worse. Are you sure you heard right? That the person who bought this bear was... I heard it from the department store clerk, pal. This is the credit card receipt from the purchase. It's for $3,800, pal. That's an exact match to the price of the stuffed bear. A receipt? That's all you have? Nah, it's not just the receipt, pal. The store clerk said to himself. He told me, I'm sure I sold the bear to Mr. Ungard. I mean, the clerk even got Mr. Ungod's autograph out of it, pal. 
so I'm sure the person that bought the stuffed bear was Mr. Ungard himself. My... my sight is failing me. Th this can't be! So what about the spy camera we found? Oh, uh, that was a dead end, pal. I mean, you can get this kind of thing from anywhere. But for now, I guess I can give these back to you for, a, uh, for you to file away into evidence. I know you don't want to give up, pal. I never thought... I didn't think it was possible. The person who put the spy camera in Juan Corda's room was Matt on guard. Why? Why would Mr. Ungard do something like this? I bet it was to catch Miss Andrews and Mr. Corda in one of their rendezvous. I bet is not good enough for me. I have to know about the absolute truth behind this camera. Are you gonna see him? Mr. On God, I mean. Yes. I'm... I'm scared, Mr. Nick. I wonder... I wonder what we will find out next. I'm scared myself, but I have to put on a good face for pearls. Matt On Guard, what in the world have you done? Well, I guess, with these now in my evidence... Hmm. I wonder if all that will allow me to... ...break some of the psych locks. We'll save before we go in. I could have also, like, checked around a lot more. You're looking really late, you know? It's already past 10 p.m., dude. I think it's time you told me the truth. Relax, don't you know the ignorance is bliss? But if you really want to know, let's talk. I wonder if I use the camera or the bear. Or if it's all tied together. Tell me a secret, don't lie. Nope. Well, Mr. Ungard, because I'm just... Hold on a sec. I'm going to consult my friend, okay? He said I should snort while I have a good laugh. Um, okay, here I go. <laughs> Can't believe you can be so flippant at a time like this. I guess I used the camera first. I figured it would all be tied together. Someone used this camera to secretly film Mr. Corridor's room the night of the murder. Secretly film? What? And then sent the images the camera took with this transmitter. Well, but dude, where's this camera you're talking about hidden? The spy camera was hidden in this bear's eye. A bear that was supposed to be a present from a fan. Hmm. I guess one had a few things that... A few of those kinds of fans too, huh, dude? Actually, I wouldn't say this bear was a present from a fan. Mm, you sure, dude? Who else could it be from? The person who gave this bear to Mr. Corrida. So I guess I give him his own profile because it says the person. Mr. On Guard, don't you know this bear from somewhere? I don't think I've ever met Mr. Bear before, dude. Uh, but he says he knows you. How could you forget such a great friend? What else did the bear tell you? He says that one, the one who put the camera in his eye was you, Mr. On Guard. If I didn't know how you work in court, I'd think I was in some serious trouble. Come on, this is all a joke, right, dude? You're just pulling my leg. Looks like you're not ready to give up your secret yet. Well, do you have any proof you want to show me first? Here's proof that it was you who put the camera inside the bear. I have here one credit card receipt, Mr. On Guard. It's from when you bought that stuffed bear. Dude, all you can tell from this is that I spent $3,800. I go to that department store all the time, okay? This $3,800, this could be the toothbrush I bought that one time. A $3,800 toothbrush? It's ivory. It's got elephant hair for bristles. Ew. Elephant hair? Is this what rich people use nowadays? Anyway, the store clerk clearly remembers you and your purchase. After all, you even gave him an autograph, did you not? Dude, you should have said that earlier. Um, so can I ask you one thing? Yes? You're my lawyer, right, dude? So, if you are, then why are you looking into stuff like that? Because if I don't know the truth, I can't help you. Sounds more like stupid lawyer talk to me. Hey, let's stop talking about this, okay? No, not yet. I haven't asked why you set the camera up. 
and what your secret is. Of course, it would be strictly confidential. So, what are you gonna do now? I'm gonna find out what I wanna know, because I must. The reason you had this camera in Mr. Corda's room and filmed it in secret is... That's something we don't have. I mean, we could try that, but that would be a deep blow to us. I don't think I have the evidence. We knocked out two of them, though. We'll quickly do a sweep of the, the hotel. We'll do a sweep of the hotel. Hmm. I wonder if we got enough evidence stuff for... No, I don't think we did. Maybe living room? Hmm. Let's quickly double check Andrews. Is there anything new? Let's quickly check the Magatama. What is it that it specifically want? It's a one lock, but I don't think we have the evidence yet. Why frame him? Can you tell me? I thought it was Matt was the killer. That's not it. You said you got revenge. Sort of deal. Why would I want to take revenge? You wanted to avenge Celeste, but what was the second thing? What are you talking about? Celeste was wands. What does this have to do with Matt? It would have to do if he had some relation. Can you explain to me the relation? No, we cannot. So that means that we have to have the evidence necessary to smash up that... Matt on guard shenanigans. Alright, now he's asking why would he put... Oh, they all come back? That's rude. That's kind of rude. Secret of yours, I tell you don't... don't lie to me. You paid close attention with a camera. Dude, where was it hidden? In the bear. The person who gave this bear to Mr. Corrida was you. Here's proof that it was you that put the bear there. Bunch of shenaniganery. What's with this? Blah, blah, blah. I haven't asked yet. What your secret is. The reason you hid the camera is this. What is this card? Maybe he doesn't know about this card. This is a certain man's calling card. The man's name is Shelly the Killer. And I'm sure you know of him, don't you? Shelly the Killer. Th th that's ridiculous! Why would I know someone, some shady scumbag like him? If you really don't know him, then why are you acting so jumpy all of a sudden? Um... This is it. I'm finally starting to get to the truth. Can't afford to make any more mistakes now. Mr. Matt on guard. I know why you know Mr. DeKiller. It's because... You're his client. Since you're the one who set up that camera, that means you knew. You knew exactly what was going to happen in that room. So, how? How would you know something like that? It's because you're his client, that's why. You hired Shelly to kill her to assassinate Mr. Juan Corrida. The real mastermind behind this whole murder is you, Matt on guard! Uh, and here I was trying to be a good boy for you, dude. I thought if you didn't know, you'd be able to do your job without feeling bad. Well, that's what I thought anyway. Mr. Ungard, you really did hire? 
Hold on a sec. I'm gonna consult myself, okay? Consult myself? Well, I guess it's probably about time anyway. About time for what? I think it's time for you to meet him now, Mr. Lawyer Dude. Oh. Shit. How did you... How do you do, Mr. Lawyer? I'm mad on guard. Where the fuck did you get that giant-ass wine glass? Well... That's kind of horrifying. Bear marks. That's bear claw marks over your face, isn't it? Well done, Mr. Wright. I bet it wasn't easy to gather as much information as you have. You really? So you are Shelly to Killer's client. You didn't really think it would do in my own hands in this, did you? What do you mean? And that woman, Adrian, was quite brave herself. Trying to stick the crime on me, I didn't think she had it in her. But all I care about is that Juan is dead, isn't that right, Mr. Lawyer? Th that's... you're lying! What a terrible... It's way past your bedtime, little girl. Go on and let us grown-ups talk about more adult things. But why? Why did you hide the video camera and... A weakling soon believes the words of others. Just like that pathetic Adrian. He knew about Miss Andrew's secret? But I'm no weakling. I don't believe in anyone, least of all assassins. What? Oh, come now, Mr. Wright. Assassins aren't above blackmail. They turn their clients into cash cows by holding the sinful deed over their heads. And a superstar like me, how much do you think I'm worth? Care to guess? And... and that's why? Yes, that's where the video comes in. It's got his face and the crime scene recorded on it, preserved for all time. So the reason the killer is working for you is because maybe at first they kidnapped Maya to, like, uh, get their client off the hook as a professional integrity, but everything else is probably because On Guard is blackmailing them. With that, I can keep him at bay, and even blackmail him if I want. That's right, that video is my insurance. Isn't that what they call it, Mr. Wright? Why would you do something so wrong? Because I'm a grown-up, and I can. Good enough of an answer for you, little girl? Why? Why would you kill Mr. Corrida? Because he was about to sling so much dung onto my beautiful public image. Scandals are a little annoying, aren't they? This is all because of that press conference, isn't it? If Mr. Corda had been able to give it, then Mr. On Guard's secret would have... Ah, uh, well, that's what we call taking advantage of the situation, you know. I had no interest in doing it, really, but bit by bit it crept up on me. And then the situation just presented itself perfectly. How beautiful, I thought. And that's... that's how Mr. Corda ended up dead. Let me tell you something. I'm not like Adrian. I don't depend on anyone. People are simply things to be used. Used and thrown away. Put on a sweet, innocent face and people will swallow anything you feed them. Not wrong, I did believe him quite a bit there. Adrian fell for it. The assassin too. Oh, and how I cannot forget. Even you fell for it, Mr. Lawyer. Everyone, all working their butts off for me, Matt on guard. Aw, oh, did that leave you speechless? What a shame. What's wrong, Mr. Lawyer? You've grown awfully quiet. How could I have been so deceived by you all this time? When we first met, I asked if you had killed Juan Corrida. And you answered very clearly that you hadn't killed anyone. Uh, now, I never told you any lies. The person who did the killing was that killer guy, right? All I'm guilty of is taking a cat nap in my room. You... You killed Mr. Corrida! <laughs> I dare you to say that in court tomorrow. Ah, oh, but too bad. You can't. You're my lawyer after all, aren't you? You could always drop my case and refuse to represent me. How does that sound? Ah, oh, but you can't, can you? That'd be one thing you absolutely can't do. The Mystic Maya! 
You wouldn't want to test a killer. He's a man of his word, or so I hear. You could end up getting a certain friend of yours rubbed out if you lose. Y you scoundrel! So if I were you, Mr. Wright, Esquire, I think I would give it all mine tomorrow. Remember, everyone likes a happy win-win solution. I... I'll get you for this! That's such a cliche phrase! Juan said something just like that, if memory serves. Of course, well, we all know how well things turned out for him, didn't we? Good night, Mr. Lawyer. Maya. Maya, what am I supposed to do? And now, you finally found it. The starting line of this case. Medgeworth. I don't care for the horrid atmosphere here. Let's return to the precinct. Well, Mr. Wright, what are you going to do? If you plan on changing your strategy... No! We, we can't do that! That's right, he's holding Maya hostage. What... what should I do? That's not something I can answer for you. But Mr. Edgeworth... Right, only you can decide where to go from here. One year ago at that time, I didn't truly understand what a prosecutor was. And that is why I had to leave the prosecutor's office. I felt that I couldn't stand in a court of law until I knew what a prosecutor really was. And now, right, it's your turn. My turn? What is this thing called a lawyer? What can you do as one? You must find the answer. And you must find it of your own... I'm a lawyer. But to fight for someone who is a, clearly a killer... Madame Guard, that man is really... Ah! It doesn't matter who, every person deserves a proper defense and a fair trial. Isn't that the basis of our judicial system? Proper defense? But what exactly is that? Is it where a lawyer forcibly and blindly gets an acquittal through shouting and trickery? Uh, ironic that you of all people should say such a thing. Isn't that exactly how you have fought all for your clients up until now? Uh, well, that may be true, but, but that's... That's because I've believed my clients to be innocent from the bottom of my heart. But if I were to get on guard and acquittal that, that isn't a proper defense at all. I became a lawyer because I thought, I thought I could save people who were suffering and in pain. But when I look at this mess we're in, I can't even protect the person closest to me. Even if I win the case, I still lose in the end. I just don't know what to do! Right. Would you get a hold of yourself? You have it all wrong. Huh? We aren't some sort of heroes. We're only human, you and I. You want to save someone? That's something easier said than done, wouldn't you say? But that's... You're a defense attorney. You can't run away from that. You can only fight. And that's all you can do. People like you and Franziska von Karma are always using all you, you have to pin me down. You fight to the very end, even when you know the truth is not with you. But I'm not like you. I can't fight for a false verdict. For a man I clearly know to be guilty. Franziska, she fights for herself. The only thing she fights for is a perfect win record, and that's all. And? Isn't that the same as you? Isn't that why you ran away a year ago? Because your precious win record was destroyed? You're so petty. I see. I understand why you despise me, so... However, you are mistaken. What are you... Thanks to you, when you sealed off my path to a perfect win record, I began to realize the error of my ways. I realized that things such as a perfect record were meaningless. What? I don't believe you. Are you saying that is why you left the prosecutor's office? But then, why? Why are you here now? And the answer to that is something you will find out on your own. I have faith you will see it before the verdict is read tomorrow. But if you can't, then you will be powerless to change the ending of this story. Remember to stay hydrated as you get called by a monster. But Mr. Nick, the transceiver! I'm sorry for what happened earlier. Now then, Mr. Attorney, do you wager you can obtain an acquittal tomorrow? My, my, what is the matter, Mr. Attorney? I don't sense your usual anger this time. Tell me, please. 
Why are you holding Maya hostage for Mr. On Guard's sake? Why are you... Why are you doing this for that cold-blooded killer? Right? Please don't misunderstand things. He is my client. Don't toy with me! A man who hires an assassin is just as much as a killer himself. I believe you are asking me for a reason as to why I am doing what I am. Yeah. This is what I like to call my aftercare. What the heck is aftercare? My name carries a certain amount of honor and dignity, Mr. Attorney. I take great care to ensure that no suspicion falls upon my clients for my handiwork. That is called client relations, and it is a part of an assassin's duty. An assassin's duty. We were unlucky this time, and my client was arrested as a suspect. As a result, I did what I had to do to enlist your expert help, Mr. Attorney, and to ensure that you would do everything in your power to the very end. What is your name? I believe I told you once before. However, you did, but... My name is De Killer. Shelly De Killer. You're Shelly De Killer? Please keep in mind you do not have much space to maneuver with me. As a De Killer, I always finish what I set out to do. If you fail to keep up your end of the bargain. Maya! It would be my duty as an assassin to see to it she receives a nice long nap. <laughs> no! Now then, if you'll excuse me. If someone were to trace the signal back to me, it would be quite troublesome. Haha, <laughs> the cat! Mystic Maya! Mystic Maya! I... I don't know what to say. Edgeworth! Hmm? Did you hear that? At the end of the transmission! Huh? Oh, that. It sounded like a cat. A cat? It can't be! That cat! Can it? What is it? I think I know where Shelly to Killer is holding Maya hostage. Edgeworth, have all police units head for on guard mansion immediately. I'm all right. You hurry over there as well, then. Don't lose hope yet, Pearls. The fight has only just begun. Yeah. So this is where we're presumably going to get the picture in the place. The picture that, uh, to kill. Well, I guess technically it's Hibbity Ba, the guy. Oh, they put the fucking teddy bear there. Does a taunt. Maya! Please answer us, Mystic Maya! We have this area completely surrounded. There is no way for him to escape. Assuming he's still in the area. I can't believe it. That butler. All this time he was to kill her. He and on guard were working together all this time. I'm sure they had worked out a contingency plan ahead of time. Oh, it's a figurine of a bear. But there are a lot of cuts in it for some reason. A wooden bear. It's covered in thin cuts. A bear? Isn't that more of a thing for Mr. Corrida? Why would something like this be here? Right, look down. There's a little pet door installed there. Uh, I'm sure that's for shoe. Do you think that this came through that little door? Um, this door. It's locked. Well, I'm pretty used to breaking down uh, doors down by now. Let's go, Edgeworth. Slam! Slam! Crash! The picture's gone. Ah, uh, there's no one here! From the looks of this room, I would say this is on God's private lounge. Look at this, right? An antenna for sending and receiving radio signals. And a VCR! Check inside the deck! If there's a tape, it would be an important piece of evidence! If we're lucky, it'll have the moment the crime was committed recorded on it. I'm sorry, but the tape deck is empty. There's no tape to be found. No. But there's no mistake that someone used this to record something. It looks like someone took the tape we're looking for and escaped with it. It's the young guard's computer. Maya, why couldn't you have used this to get help? Mr. Nick, where's, where's the power switch? Oh, I get it. So that's what happened. She couldn't find the power switch. I can't read all the labels, but this is a very large collection of videotapes. Looks like on guard taped all of his own shows. It's a VCR and antenna. The footage that the spy camera took at the scene of the crime was beamed here and recorded on tape. If only we had the tape, it would have been really helpful. A huge television and speakers lo loom largely here. I'm sure if Maya saw this, she'd say, 
I would die a happy samurai fan if I could see the nickel samurai on a TV like this. Yeah, that's what she'd say. Ah, I can't believe I just made a joke about my all things considered. Ah, the picture. Searched all over, but it looks like he got away. I'm sorry. It looks like he slipped out of our grasp this time. And now, we've lost our only lead. Don't give up yet, and that little girl is looking to you to be her pillar. Yeah, you're right. We're close, I can tell. We've already set up checkpoints along every route leading out of this district. Leave the rest to us. Maya. Picture. This looks like a picture of Miss Impax. With love, Celeste. Miss Impax? You mean... Yes, Mr. Corda's former manager. Why would a picture of Miss Impax be here in Mr. On Guard's mansion? And why does it say with love? And this might be a clue. Ah! What's wrong, Pearls? P please let me see the picture frame! Huh? What's so special about the frame? On the back! There's something written on the back of the frame! Maya! It's Mystic Maya! She left us a message! What? I thought you'd come. I knew you would. Now listen up, you better get on guard at guilty sentence, okay? If you get that creepy slime bag of not guilty, I'll never forgive you, ever! I'm fine, so don't worry. There's so much I want to write, but I don't think I have a lot of time left. Pearly, you're there too, right? Make sure you help Nick, okay? Someone's gotta watch out for the helpless lunk. Um, that's it for now, Nick. I guess I'll talk to you guys later. That's... I... No! Mystic Maya! Right! What's wrong? Why the blank stare? Oh, um, nothing. We've searched the house and this is the last room. It looks like he eluded us. Edgeworth. Yes? As far as clues go, I think this is about all I'm going to get. But I'm still short one last thing. And what is that? <laughs> yeah, the Cyclock. Miss Andrew's psych lock. If I could just find a way to find out what secret she's holding, but I think I stand a chance in court tomorrow. To blow this case wide open, expose the truth. I think I know what you're thinking. I'll contact the detention center. Um, thanks, Edgeworth. Well, let's go, Pearls. It's time to open that last lock. This is going intense. Good evening, Mr. Wright. What's wrong? You look ill. Miss Andrews. I have come to remove your psych lock. <laughs> she has no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I've come to remove your psych lock. Psych lock? I want to know, and you will tell me, your secret. Fine, go ahead. Try to break me if you can. <laughs> That's the first time we've told anybody else about a psych lock, and she's just like, okay, this lawyer's kind of gone off the deep end. And hilariously, it is a small lock. It's only one. Also, every single time we've gotten a multi, like, super lock, they've been relatively easy to break, all things considered. Diddly dee, diddly dee. And what is that relation? This. This is a photo of Miss Impacts, correct? She looks younger than when she passed away, though. What? With love, Celeste. This is Miss Enpax's handwriting, isn't it? Where did you find this? No, that's all right. It was a rhetorical question. Yeah, it is. I found this at Mr. Ungard's mansion. And after all this time, my last remaining secret has been revealed. Well, why frame him? Celeste, she was supposed to get married to Juan. Yes, but I heard that didn't work out. Because Mr. Corda didn't want to get married to her anymore, right? Yes, because of Matt. But because of Mr. On Guard? What do you mean? I think I can see where this is going. Celeste, she was Matt's manager a long time ago. She was the happiest woman in the world at the time. 
I was working part-time back then, and I often saw the two of them together. So that's why, with love, Celeste is written on the frame of that picture. They were a couple, weren't they? They were a couple, weren't they? It wasn't anything as splendid as that. Celeste was being used. Toyed with until she was thrown away. That's so horrible. Matt's entire image is built around how nice and wonderful of a man he is. A scandal would have destroyed that. Which is why Celeste, in her kindness, moved over to Worldwide Studios. And that is where she met Juan. She seemed really happy with him, even happier than when she was with Matt. Celeste and Juan were such a good couple that they were even planning to get married. And then, it was suddenly called off. On the night Juan called their marriage off, Celeste... She killed herself. And that's why I framed Matt. It was for revenge for Celeste and for myself. I'm sure even you can guess why Juan called the wedding off, right? Matt confessed to Juan about his relationship with Celeste. I see. So that's what happened. But then why did Mr. Corda have to call off the wedding? I don't understand at all. It was probably because of his worthless male pride. Juan and Matt were always fierce rivals. Matt waited for the wedding announcement and then unleashed the truth on Juan. He was aiming for when it he was aiming for when it would hurt Juan the most. Poor Miss Impax. That wasn't the end of it. That day I'm almost certain that Celeste left a suicide note behind. And in that note, she left a detailed account of Matt's various misdeeds, and... So that... So that she would never again be hurt by Matt, she chose to die. Then, when Juan discovered her body, he hid the note. But, but why would he do that? It's simple. Juan realized that note was a powerful weapon against Matt, and would be especially damaging to his refreshing like a spring breeze image. In any case... With his pride hurt, Juan sought revenge. Revenge. That's, there's that word again. Juan wanted to publicly disclose the contents of the suicide note. At a time that would cause Matt the most damage, of course. And that was at the press conference after the stage show. I know all about it because I heard it all from Juan. It was so I could find out about all this that I drew close to Juan to begin with. They're quite a pair of hideous monsters, aren't they? While you discover the herid is truth, remember to stay hydrated. Oh. Even Celeste's death was something for them to use in their game. That night, when I found Juan's body, it was only natural that I thought the murderer was Matt. Those two were always spying on one another, after all. As for me, I was frantically searching for Celeste's suicide note. I wanted to destroy it before it ever went public. I was going to burn it. I'd even brought a lighter. But I couldn't find the suicide note. And that's when revenge crossed my mind. Yes, I was going to bring them to my own kind of cruel revenge. Celeste was killed by those two monsters, so when I stabbed Juan's body with that knife, I didn't feel a single shred of guilt. And that's all I have to say. Well, Mr. Wright, even knowing all this, are you still going to help that man? I... I'm a lawyer. I see. What a foul profession. Thank you very much for your time and for talking with me. It was no big deal. I couldn't sleep anyway. I can't sleep either. Not with my situation. Worth what I know now. Describe a game without saying the title. A lawyer gets help from a girl who can make her boobs huge from possession. That's... When you put it like that, that definitely sounds like a skeevy light novel. And not this. We'll go a little bit into the trot. Well, that's a callback to the tutorial match. Okay. 
Uh, how did I get into this mess? That's far enough! You can't run forever, Mr. Phoenix Wright! This again? I didn't expect for this to get a reprisal. What? What have I done wrong? I cannot allow you to go on like this! But, but I'm just a simple defense attorney! Silence! You are no longer worthy of your title! And then Phoenix got Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 I've had this dream before, some place, some time ago, as if this day was written in my, into my destiny. Today I'll stand in court as a lawyer to prove a killer innocent. Can you imagine you had to actually fight Nightmare Judge via minigame? That would be hilarious. That would be an amazing thing. Hello, this is Phoenix Wright. You don't look so well, dude. You're gonna prove me not guilty today, right? <laughs> if you please, Mr. Lawyer. Remember, it's not just me. Your precious friend's life is riding on today's verdict, too. <laughs> now listen up. You better get Mr. On Guard a guilty sentence, okay? If you get that creepy slime bag and not guilty, I'll never forgive you, ever! Maya. Phoenix. Phoenix! L Mia! Maya. How's Maya? I don't know. You don't know? She hasn't tried to channel me since yesterday. Mia, what... what am I supposed to do? Well, like I said, for a lawyer, the worst of the times are when you have to force your biggest smiles. B but You can't give up. There's still some hope left. Stop it, please! There's nothing left, not here, not anywhere! Ah, it's that cursed on guard again! WILL YOU LEAVE ME ALONE?! Look, don't call me anymore, I mean it! You're really mean, pal. Ah, gumshoe, I'm really, really sorry. Where are you? They let me join the investigation team and were chasing after the killer, pal. Then you have some sort of lead? Sorry, but right now we've got zero leads on the guy. But we're not going to give up! Gumshoe. Until the trial is over, until the victim is handed down, we're gonna do everything we can to find the killer. If we can get my out, then you can get on God the guilty verdict he deserves, pal! That's true, I could do that if they found Maya first. You got that? You have to go and do whatever you can to make the trial last longer! I have to make the trial last longer? If you go at Mr. Edgeworth with everything you've got, then you two can draw it out! Oh, now I get it. I believe in you, pal! You and Mr. Edgeworth can do it! So, believe in us! We're gonna give it all we've got just like you! Got it, thanks, Gumshoe! Actually, why can't Maya channel Mia to trick the killer that he kidnapped the wrong girl? Probably because the killer probably would have researched into the Maya, like, the fake clan stuff. Considering that he knows that Phoenix Wright is a prolific lawyer, he probably would also know that the assistant of, like, Diddly D, the assistant of Phoenix Wright would also, like, uh, be important, so he probably did research into the Fey Clan and knows of the spirit channeling technique, and would know that even if Maya did do that, it's just uh, a sham. Hey, just wanted to let you know I was snickering the whole time you were impossibly speculating the culprit last night. <laughs> yeah, because I just, my brain just wanted to go in random places. It's like, what ideas can I have? What madness can I spew? And this is the most madness-inducing case so far. And now we know all the secrets all of a sudden. Hey, Phoenix, you understand now, don't you? You have something money will never be able to buy. Friendship. It's the strongest weapon in the world, and you have it in abundance. Yeah. Looks like we're coming to the end. I have to make the trial last as long as I can. Gumshoe will come through, I know it. <laughs> I'll bet you, you're enjoying this. And yeah, that's a good to killer theory. <laughs> I wonder if the killer is, like, knows he's also under blackmail.
But yeah, I knew that there was something more with Impax's suicide. But yeah, it's uh, neat that it's all coming together. Court is now in session for the trial of Matt on guard. The defense is ready, Your Honor. And the prosecution has been ready for a while, Your Honor. Ask Edgeworth to present 15 updated autopsy reports. <laughs> that would be hilarious. While you're beginning the trial of your life, remember to stay hydrated. The mystery being what exactly was Miss Adrian's role in this whole murder. That is to say, is she really connected to the crime itself? Mr. Edgeworth, if you'd please inform the court of today's proceedings. Adrian Andrews. She forged evidence that threw suspicion onto Mr. On Guard, and then proceeded to escape the crime scene by wearing a nickel samurai costume. The guilt of these actions are those from which she cannot escape. Hmm, then you're saying that she is guilty after all? I'm not finished, Your Honor. Miss Andrews has nothing to do with committing the actual murder. I would like to direct the court's attention to this card. What is that? It looks like a shell. This is the calling card of a certain assassin. An assassin, you say? Yes, Juan Corridor was killed by a professional assassin. You need to redeem that makes you do re uh you need a redeem that makes you do Edward's voice or the judge's voice for five minutes. That would destroy my voice. Like in other games, I might do that though. Well, the judge's voice might destroy my voice, but I could probably do an Edgeworth voice. Yeah, I might make that a redeem for like when I play other games and I'm just rambling. <laughs> Let's watch Edgeworth play Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. <laughs> And that, and the person who hired the assassin, his client, so to speak, is Matt on guard. What a surprising turn of events. I would think it's become commonplace by now, Your Honor. I know what's going on this time, so I know that everything Edgeworth has said is true. But we still have to hold out as long as we can, at least until Maya's safe and sound. I wonder how the trial will turn out today. Now then, please call your first witness, Mr. Edgeworth. The prosecution calls the defendant's mentor, Mr. Will Powers, to the stand. Hey, this is actually the first time you're on the stand. Because you were never, like, actually a witness last time. Now then, witness, your name and occupation, please. Uh, okay. I'm, uh, Will Powers. I'm a poor underpaid action star. And what is your relation to the defendant? Well, that's... I guess I'm sort of a lousy mentor to him in a way, yeah? <laughs> Edgeworth, come on, Pikachu, save Charmander. He enjoys tea like I do. <laughs> um, Mr. Powers, please. You don't need to put yourself down so much. Oh, uh, sorry, well... But I'm just kind of a guy... nothing sort of guy. On the night of the murder, you visited the defendant's room. Is this correct? Uh, yes. I... I didn't know that. Um, but, you know, I didn't actually get to see Matt when I went. All you need to do is answer what you're asked. Now then, I would like you to please testify about when you went to Mr. On Guard's room. Okay, sure. After the award ceremony, I went to by myself to Matt's room. Matt was standing there in front of his room, still in his nickel samurai costume. He was talking with someone at first I thought it was the bellboy. I watched the two of them for a while, but then I gave up and went back. I had guests with me that night, and I couldn't make them wait for me. Hmm, nothing sounds out of place in Mr. Power's testimony. And talking about the bellboy is no big deal. If one assumes that the person Mr. On Guard was speaking with was an ordinary bellboy... What are you implying? Well, Mr. Wright, let's have your cross-examination, shall we? What's stopping Phoenix Wright from telling the judge he needs to stall the court for Maya's sake? Because the judge is an idiot. <laughs> the judge is kind of an idiot and probably would let something slip. And, uh, after all, th this is a wacko world, and they probably let, uh, 
what's his name on guard keep his little wrist communicator. So, and plus, it's entirely possible that the assassin has also bugged the courtroom to make sure that things go well. Because he is what, like, because seriously, basically, they don't want to risk anything. If they tell the judge, the judge could do something dumb. They need to keep it, like, on the down low, as few, like, chains in this link as possible, so it doesn't break from the weakest one. Looks like we're in another sticky situation. Huh? A trap. Can't you smell it, Phoenix? But for us to find out more, we're just going to have to charge in head first, right? And now we have to pick holes in a testimony that is completely honest. Yee! Why would you go by yourself? The defendant's room? Why did you go there? Well, I'm his mentor, like a big brother, sort of, and I wanted to say congrats. What's the wrong? Why did you stop? Mr. Wright! What is it? You... you're going to try and trick me into a corner, aren't you? Huh? I... I know I'm just a poor underpaid action star, but... but I... I'm not the killer! Um, no one said you were, Mr. Powers. No, please, don't trick me! Every time you do your lawyer thing, the witness suddenly turns into the bad guy! Every time? Witness, I will personally talk to the defense at a later time. For, so for now, please kindly cooperate and continue with your testimony. Sorry. So you went to the defendant's room, and then... Hey, wait a minute. When and how did I suddenly turn into the bad guy here? That's honestly hilarious. Are you sure that it was Matt on guard? Yeah, I'm sure. He wasn't wearing the Nickel Samurai mask then. If that's the case, then he really can't be mistaken. And what was the defendant doing standing in front of his own room? So if Maya's 17, and if she's channeling Mia, if someone wanted to date her, is it considered necrophilia or pedophilia? That is a... That goes into the deep, dark, darkest pits of the spirit channeling technique? I guess technically, it would be... Necrophilia? Because you are still engaging with a dead person, even though physically they're not dead then. That is a very odd philosophical question. Actually, te <laughs> in a way, isn't that kind of a controversy that happened with that one Wonder Woman movie because her boyfriend was dead and possessed an unassuming random guy? And they just didn't care about that poor guy being possessed the entire time they were making out? That was weird. He was talking with someone at first. I thought it was the bellboy. At first? What do you mean by that? Well, he was in a bellboyish uniform, and he had a bottle of juice on a tray. Sounds like an ordinary bellboy to me. Um, yeah, but I didn't think he was a normal bellboy. And why was that? Um, why did I think that, Mr. Wright? How am I supposed to know? Sorry, but I can't remember right now. Sorry. I guess I'm going to have to wait patiently on this one. I watched the two of them for a while, but then I gave up and went back. You saw the two of them, the bellboy and the defendant, together, correct? Yeah, the bellboy just wanted to say congrats. Now, while you were watching the two of them, did you notice anything strange? Um, you know, I did feel something weird. I think it was because Matt, well... He gave the bellboy a tip. A tip? But that's a perfectly normal thing to do. So how long did you watch the two of them? Uh, not more than a minute or two, I think. I had guests with me that night and I couldn't make them wait for me. So who are these guests you're talking about? You guys, of course. You and Maya and the Little Pearl. I thought it would be really rude since I invited you guys if I disappeared on you. So I went back to my seat pretty soon after me seeing Matt in the hallway. This is like squeezing water from a stone. It's probably pointless to press further. Okay, if Phoenix can defeat freaking Galactus in Marvel vs. Capcom 3, he is the most powerful person in history. Well, technically it's him and th two other people. Well, I guess technically three other... Four other people, because it's the two other playable characters, then Maya, 
and then technically the judge who smacks him with a giant spirit gavel. Do you remember this incident? Did Mr. Powers leave his seat that night? I don't remember that happening at all. Maya was making such a racket in her hyper state. I ended up focusing on her. I see. In any case, from his story, he probably wasn't gone for very long. <laughs> Alright, apparently I'm supposed to give something, but what do I give? What do I give? What do I give? Do I present the uh, character profile of the, the killer bellboy? I don't believe so. Hmm. Then again, Mia focused on he couldn't have been gone that long. So I wonder... Then there was also the thing about the bellboy being given a tip. Hmm. Hmm. Which one gave the tip thing? I want to see that again. First I thought it was the bellboy. Plus this also could be the thing at first. What do you mean? If it was a normal bellboy, what was that? What do you think that? Oh, wait a second. Actually, Mr. Powers only a few minutes ago. Oh! So this is one of the ones where I needed to go and get all the information and come back for this one. Okay. Mm, you know, I did feel something weird. I think it was because Matt, well, he gave the bellboy a tip. Could it be that you felt something strange about the tip-giving incident itself? Still, if he can defeat Galactus via help th from normal people, my point still stands. Phoenix Wright, the ultimate attorney. Ah, yeah, that's it. You really know your job. Hmm, Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor. This bellboy, he wasn't an ordinary one, was he? Perhaps we should let the witness tell us. Very well. Mr. Powers, please amend your testimony. You mean about the bellboy, right? Matt gave the bellboy a tip. So he gave the bellboy a tip. What's so strange about that? Uh, well, you see, Matt's not a poor penny pincher like me. I was trying to figure out how much it was because the tip really shocked me. How much it was? But that's when something even more surprising happened. The bellboy was putting the tip he got in his pocket. And that's when I got my first good look at the guy's face. I was really shocked. Hmm, I'm afraid I don't follow at all. It sounds like Mr. Powers was surprised twice by this event. I wonder which of this shocking the bellboy's face. What was so shocking about the bellboy's face, Mr. Powers? Well, it wasn't exactly a boy, more like an old gramps. <clears throat> I hope you know that discrimination towards old men is a no-no in my court. No, oh, no, that's not what I meant at all. In the smack middle of the guy's face, there was a line of stitches. A line of stitches? Yeah, and it went straight from the tippy top of his head to the bottom of his chin. Almost like if the thread snapped, all the stuff in his head would come spilling out. Ah! He was there at Unguard's house. He was that butler! What is it, Mr. Wright? Uh, nothing, Your Honor. So that means Unguard was talking with the killer then. And, and fa if that fact were to be exposed, Unguard would be declared guilty in a blink. Phoenix, you have to play dumb here. Pretend you don't know anything. Yes, Chief. You sure you don't have anything you'd like to say, Mr. Wright? Huh? Um, what did you just say, Your Honor? Nothing, Mr. Wright, nothing. We're just going around and around in circles. Now then, Mr. Powers, please continue with your testimony. Phoenix Wright, lawyer by day, defeater of planet-eating titans by night. That's how it goes, ain't it? Hmm. Hmm. Now I need to wonder what I should do here. Hmm. Maybe I should do it again and then go after the tip instead. Let's go after the tip. While you're trying to find time-wasting mechanics in a trial, <laughs> remember to stay hydrated. On guard's tip. <laughs> The defendant is a huge star. He can afford to give generous tips, wouldn't you agree? Um, sure. 
But giving him that much was maybe a little too much, I think. A little too much? Would you please clarify for the court about how much would you say the defendant gave the bellboy? Honestly, I don't know. I can't even begin to guess. And why is that? Because he gave the bellboy a really, really fat roll of cash. A roll of cash?! Uh, well, how interesting. That certainly was a very generous tip, wasn't it? A very fat roll of cash. That can hardly be called a tip, Your Honor. Hmm. The church is beginning to look awfully suspicious of us. Uh, why look, why suspicious of me? Hmm, why would he be so, we need to distract him. Let's raise an objection. objection. The defendant is a superstar. That kind of tip is typical fare for people like him. Are you saying that all superstars are super spenders? If I could receive large rolls of cash by simply bringing people things on trays, then why on earth would I stand around here prosecuting? He's got a point. I don't even get paid, let alone rolls of cash for all my hard work. I think that's true. I don't think he's ever been paid. Hmm, so supposing that roll of cash was not a tip, then what was it? Payment, Your Honor. Payment? Isn't it obvious? For the murder of one corridor. Then the bellboy will the witness saw. Yes, he was the assassin. Hold your horses now. Mr. Edgeworth, you don't have any proof of this, do you? Have I ever been unprepared to support my claims, Your Honor? I have here the card Shelley to killer left at the scene of the crime. Shelley to killer? He is the person the police's special investigations team has been chasing for ages. Wait, he doesn't get paid? Why is he taking a payless job then? I think mostly from circumstance. Because first there was the case where he took on Larry's. He took on Larry's case and probably didn't get paid. Then he took on Mia, uh, Maya's case and didn't get paid. Because he also needed to defend himself. Then he took on Power's case, which he probably should have been paid, but... As uh, this case notes, he's a penny-pinching, uh, underappreciated action star, so probably couldn't pay much. I guess technically he could have been paid by uh, Edgeworth in the final case of the original game. In Rise from the Ashes, he probably got paid? Because it was, like, the major super prosecutor. In the tutorial case of this game, he probably should have gotten paid. In the second case of this game, he was defending Maya again and probably didn't get paid. In the third case of this game, he defended... D -d 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 Actually, he should have been paid on that one too because it was a super magician. I mean, Edgeworth lives in a mansion and drives a fancy sports car and was willing to pay M uh, Maya's bail. So who knows? Then again, a lot of his money probably gets sapped up like when Maya kept triggering Lada's camera back in that one case. Really? What's wrong, Mr. Powers? No, nothing. Something just clicked in my head, and I think I just figured something out. Oh? Actually, I saw that bellboy again later on that night. What? <laughs> Mr. Powers, please testify. Tell us what you saw. Yes, sir. Right away. Oh, boy. This time, it, I was in the hallway because I had to go to the bathroom. And that's when the bellboy I saw earlier came out of the room. Of course, when I say room, I mean Juan Corda's room. Now that I think about it, that bellboy did seem kind of out of place. Yeah, so he had to be the assassin, I'm sure of it. I mean... What do you mean, I mean? Thank you very much. That is all we need to know for now. Huh? But I'm not done. There's still more. Let us first establish that the bellboy was truly Mr. DeKiller, then we shall see. Hmm, so the bellboy came out of the victim's room. And if that bellboy really was the assassin, then I think the answer is fairly obvious. That would be correct, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Wright, I believe it's your turn to entertain and make us laugh. Ha 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 ha. This is no laughing matter. 
It's the nerves. I love how in the third case, Tiger masqueraded as Phoenix, and yet he don't get furious that uh, he was a victim of identity theft. Did somebody do that? My brain is running a blank. Maybe. Could have been a minor thing I missed, brain. Well, let's just press on everything. And what was it this time? Uh, well, I don't remember. The award ceremony ended around 8 p.m., right? And I went to Matt's room pretty soon after that, and then I came back. And then I went to the bathroom. So I guess maybe it was around 8, 10 p.m. by that time. You're not one for details, are you, Mr. Powers? Sorry. I thought I could maybe catch Matt and say my congrats. And that's when the bellboy I saw earlier came out of the room. Are you sure it was the same bellboy? Yeah. And how could you tell? All the bellboys wear the same uniform, after all. But you see, well, he had the, so, those stitches in his face. Uh. So I'm sure it's the same guy that was talking with Matt. Hmm. So which room did the bellboy come out of? Of course, when I say room, I mean one corner's room. The victim's room, huh? Yeah, the one with all the really pretty flowers and teddy bears. It was Juan's room, all right? Words cannot describe how screwed I am. <laughs> He's just like... Oh, crap, I think that's in the third game. I think I spoiled it for you. Deeply apologize for that. Ah, it's fine. I'll probably forget... <laughs> I'll probably forget about it by the time comes. <laughs> I just love that. I can't believe how screwed I am. Let's continue with the testimony, shall we? Now that I think about it, the bellboy did seem kind of out of place. Um, so, what exactly was so out of place about him? Right, right, right. Why the insipid grin? Maybe because I have no idea what damaging thing he's gonna say next? Um, well, the bellboy was empty-handed. Empty-handed? That bellboy was one of the room service people, right? But he wasn't pushing a cart, and he wasn't holding a tray either. You'd call that a little strange, wouldn't you? Hmm, I agree that it is a bit strange, Mr. Powers. But is it really that unusual for a bellboy to be empty-handed? What should I do? Should I let Mr. Powers' testimony slide, or... Well, let's try to waste time! Let's pull a fast one! There's nothing strange or unusual about an empty-handed bellboy! But there really, really is! There really, really isn't! <laughs> If you two are done being school children, bellboys are for room service. There's no reason for them to be empty-handed ever. Your Honor, I ask that the witness's previous statement be supplanted with this new one. Uh, Edgeworth, are you going to do whatever you can to make the bellboy look suspicious? I see. Very well, this court recognizes and grants the prosecution's request. Mr. Powers, if you could amend your testimony, please. Yes, sir. I thought it was kind of strange for a bellboy to come out of the guest room empty-handed. Hmm. Now, if we're going on the grounds that we're trying to stall for time and discredit the poor guy... Cause... Let's look at the crime photo. We could say that maybe he delivered all that tomato juice, I guess. But how would I go about, uh, declaring that? Maybe the wine glass? It's filled with tomato juice. But I do not know. Shlibbidibby. I know, I'll save! And then I'll do it! Because I have the power of immortality! I will first do the crime scene photo, because I want to specifically point out the... Orange juice. Or whatever. Tomato juice. Mr. Powers. Yes? You're easily influenced by other people's words, aren't you? As soon as you heard that bellboy might have been the killer, you got caught up in believing it must be true. But, but, isn't he really suspicious? He's got all those stitches and, and... So, a baseball has stitches? Are you saying all baseballs are suspicious because they have stitches? Oh, well, there's also, I mean, what about him being empty-handed? I would like to ask the court to please take a look here. Look at this photograph. This is the crime scene. 
There's a wine glass sitting next to Mr. Corda's body. The liquid inside this glass is tomato juice. And now, if you would look at what is on the top of the table in the lower right corner here... Anyone can clearly see that it is a tray with a bottle of tomato juice on it! The bellboy had just brought this to Mr. Corda's room. He left the tray in the room, which is why he was empty-handed when he left. Ugh! But... That would mean the bellboy had seen and left the dead body in the room. Ah, but can you prove that Mr. Corda was already dead at that time? Uh, Mr. Edgeworth! Yes? I blame you for leading me down this route! <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. What is with him? Why is he laughing? Phoenix, so you see, Your Honor, I have multiple pieces of evidence that my client didn't do it. I'm happy for you, and I'm gonna let you finish. But if your client didn't do it, who did? If you can't prove that, you have no case. That's not my job. My only job is to prove my client innocent. Nothing more. Yeah, that is the wacky world we live in. Witness, isn't there one more thing you would like to share with us? Is there? The bellboy was empty-handed. Or should I say empty-handed? I recall you had something interesting to say about his hands. Oh yeah, I almost forgot! Huh? What? That bellboy, he was wearing gloves! Gloves? Yeah, pitch black leather ones. All the other bellboys don't wear gloves like that, right? Black leather gloves! Why didn't you mention them earlier? Sorry, it slipped my mind. Ah, uh, boy does this make the bellboy look really suspicious. All right, I gotta focus. I can't get lax here. So what if he had gloves? A lot of bellboys wear gloves. Come on, Mr. Wright. The bellboy was wearing black leather ones. So, a football is made of leather. Are you saying all footballs are suspicious because they're made of leather? Why is he on this? Are you saying that all of these insert sports ball is suspicious? <laughs> That's hilarious. But that man, he received a large roll of cash from the defendant. And then he was seen leaving the crime scene wearing black leather gloves. I don't think that even someone like myself can believe he was just another bellboy. Ah. Uh. It seems that we have finally come to an understanding. Now then, witness, please continue with the rest of your testimony. The rest? Oh yes, please tell us more. Okay. Heck, there's an entire video about that statement I just said. Can I share it? I think I have links disabled. You could probably, like, uh, put the video title of, like, hey, this is what the video, you can look it up on YouTube. Mostly because I'm paranoid and I disabled, uh, l it also doesn't help that, like, for a while there, my Twitch just got, like, flooded with those bots that are like, Hey, would you like to get some subscribers and follows? Follow Link! And then their link didn't work because I had disabled the links on my Twitch chat. Haha, <laughs> screw you, bots. You can't bot my channel! Yeah. After leaving Juan's room, the bellboy went and knocked on Matt's door just like that. He gave something to the person inside the room. Then the old guy just left without even going into the room. After that, I went to the bathroom and then back to my seat. So the bellboy, after leaving the crime scene, next went to the defendant's room. Yeah, I kinda saw all that by accident. Some accident? I'd say you saw too much. And all of it was suspicious to high heaven. Hmm. I think it's safe to say that we can no longer consider this bellboy to be normal. Now then, let's get started, shall we? Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Yes, your honor. Let's press on everything. Is that what you saw while you were busy spying? E excuse me? I may be a poor underpaid action star, but even I wouldn't stoop to spying. Well, I think the point is, where did you watch from all this from, Mr. Powers? Oh, um, from the door of the bathroom with my left eye, in a sort of sneaky spy-like... I knew he was spying! Please, does it really matter if he was doing it over or underhandedly? What did the bellboy do next? That's all I care to know. Quick save, just to be safe. 
He gave something to the person inside the room. I said, hold it! Um, okay. What are you doing, Phoenix? That's better. Hmm. <laughs> what kind of statement is that? Please elaborate and give us a few more details. Oh, um, okay. Hmm, I should probably ask him only one question at a time. Ask about this something. He gave something to this person. Yeah. And what was this something? <laughs> if I remembered what it was, I wouldn't be calling it something, would I? But this implies that something was removed from the scene of the crime. Are you sure you can really you really can't remember, Mr. Powers? Um, I think it was something kind of small. This is an incredibly crucial piece of information. Please try to remember what it was. Um, I'll try. In the meantime, let's talk of another point, namely what the bellboy did next. Oh, so after he gave the person inside the room the thing... I'm gonna do it again and I'll ask him about the person inside. I said hold it! I love that he's just like, he's being super mean. Let's ask about the person inside. So who took this something the bellboy handed off? Um, actually, I don't know. What do you mean? I'm sorry, but I only saw the person's arm. Only an arm? <clears throat> Only an arm? Then you're saying you didn't see the person's face. Yeah. I would like to summarize the testimony up to this point if you don't mind. When the bellboy left the crime scene, he immediately went to the defendant's room. There he handed a small item of some sort to the person inside. As for the person who received the item, all you could see was the person's arm. Yes, yes. It was just like that. Mr. Edgeworth, is all this really that important? Of course, Your Honor. I think this is of the utmost importance. This is where what this is when whatever was removed from the crime scene was handed over to the client. Hmm. Mr. Powers, please try to remember what it was the bellboy handed off. Um, well, let's see. I think it was no. If you remember, please add it to your testimony. Yes, sir. If I saw it again, I would say for sure, but I think it was some sort of wooden statue. You mean like a certain wooden bear we found? A statue? Yeah, it kind of looked like one, I guess. If I saw the actual thing again, I'd probably remember, you know? Looks like the, like for this trial to proceed, I'm going to have to come up with whatever this statue thing was. You're going to have to trust your instinct on this one and take a chance, Phoenix. Well, Mr. Powers, let's continue with your testimony. What did the bellboy do after that? Well, I think I know what it is. Isn't it this? It's a wooden bear-shaped figurine. And it would make sense that... I was wondering why there was a bear in On Guard's mansion, so this could probably be it. <laughs> What was the point of the pregnant pause? Where did that objection come from? Well, speak up. Uh, it was me, your honor. What is it, Phoenix? I have a feeling that something bad is going to happen once I show this. Mr. Wright, if you have something to say, please spit it out. Yes, your honor. Okay, Phoenix, deep breath. Mr. Powers, there's something you saw. Was it this item? Oh, hey! That's it! That's the something! Well, Mr. Wright, you really figured it out! Hmm, I really... I recall we found this at Matt on God's mansion. At the defendant's mansion? Oh, should I not have done that? Is this gonna lead to an unstandard game over? What does this mean? It's simple, Your Honor. Shelley the Killer assassinated Juan Corrida in his room, and then he stole this wooden bear from the scene of the crime. Then the bear being found at Mr. Ungott's mansion would mean... It goes without saying, Your Honor. Mr. Matt Ungott is the killer's client. Order! 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 I said order! Mr. Wright, this is most unfortunate turn of events for you. Yeah. Sorry, Mia. No, it's all right. Your judgment was sound. Actually, I figured the bear would come up. If not now, then it would have ha would have later on. Even if you hadn't shown it to the court, I'm sure your friend Edgeworth would have. Ah, I almost forgot that he knew about it, too. Hmm, I think it is clear that there's no need for us to continue this trial. I 
I can't let this happen. I have to do something. There has to be something we overlooked. Your Honor, a minute, please. Yes, Mr. Wright? There are still a few points left that we have not fully explored. What are you trying to pull? Oh, well, we can't have that. All right, Mr. Wright, what questionable point would you like further explored? Hmm. Diddly diddly do. Hmm. No, probably not the testimony. It has to do with the bear. The person who received the bear, obviously. Hmm. Maybe the bear itself? Maybe the bear itself. Well, we can save, so let's have the immortality plea. Aha! Bear itself. I think it's fairly obvious that the bear itself is very questionable. The bear? Mr. Wright? This was found at Mr. On Guard's mansion. However, Mr. On Guard was arrested at the hotel that night, which means that since the murder occurred, he has not had a chance to go home. Oh! I, I didn't even put that together. I think Your Honor has already figured out what I'm trying to say. It's not possible that it was Mr. On Guard who took this bear to his mansion. Why, that's very true. We didn't consider that point, Mr. Wright. There was no way time-wise for the defendant to have taken this bear home. Uh, disaster avert. Disaster has come back. You haven't gotten the best of me yet, Mr. Wright. Huh? I remember it as clear as day. I remember what you muttered to yourself at Ungard's mansion. We have this area completely surrounded. There's no way for him to escape. I can't believe it. That butler. All this time he was the killer. The killer and Ungard were working together, so to speak. And the killer was hiding at the but Ungard mansion as its butler. What a bold move. The bear figurine was brought back to Ungard Mansion by the killer himself. That's an awesome picture, actually. When it looked like he was about to be arrested, Ungard had him um do so. I assume because it would have been a bad, been bad had the police found it during their investigation. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, you've been quiet for a while now. This is too much. Isn't there anything I can attack at all? I have to try. I have to find something else because the guy said that he gave it to him. Hmm. Hmm. I have to try. I have to find something else. What will you do now, Mr. Wright? Do you plan to? I plan to expose a clearly shaky place in Mr. Power's testimony. What? There is still another one. There is, in, there is indeed, Your Honor, and it's quite a questionable point. What are you trying to pull? Oh, well, we can't have that. All right, Mr. Wright, what questionable point would you like to explore? The person who received the bear. There was one thing in Mr. Power's testimony that was very unclear, and that is the identity of the person who received the bear. He gave something to the person inside the room. I'm sorry, but I only saw the person's arm. As long as we don't know who it was that took the bear, we can't be sure if- ah! Everyone's confused. What is it, Mr. Powers? If you're going to scream like that, then at least give us a good reason why. Oh yeah, sorry. Actually, so I remembered. Um, I remembered who took the bear. What? Really? I mean, I only saw his arm. But, but, the arm. It was the Nickel Samurai's arm, I swear. You've got to be kidding. Are you sure of that, Mr. Powers? Yeah, I'm sure it was the Nickel Samurai. I'm going to assume we show the Lada photo. Order, order! It looks like you've dug your own grave yet again. How many times is that today? I've lost count. So the person who took this little bear was the Nickel Samurai. And as we all know, Matt on guard is the Nickel Samurai. Thanks to the defense, we've made that all very clear. I think we've heard enough. We now know why this bear figurine was at the defendant's mansion. Well, technically we don't know why, because we don't know specifically why this bear was taken. As well as who it was that received the bear from the assassin in his room. Everything has become very clear. The client who hired the assassin to commit the murder was Mr. Matt on guard. 
I see no reason for this trial to continue. Therefore, I will now hand down my verdict. Thank you, Your Honor, You are for your understanding. You see, Mr. Wright, you could not win against the truth, could you? I knew it would turn out this way. After all, what Edgeworth was, has stated is the truth. Any last objections, Mr. Wright? Well, do I? Raise an objection! I will now announce my ver- <laughs> There's only one way for me to drag this trial out. The only thing I have left is one dirty trick. Your Honor, right now we have these two reasons to believe my client is the assassin's... <laughs> the assassin's client. Reason number one, he accepted the figurine from the assassin. Reason number two, that very same figurine was found at the unguard mansion. However, it's possible this is all a work of a certain other person. What are you saying? What I'm saying is it's possible a different person is the killer's real client. The real client? Yes. Tisk tisk. Is this all you have? Well now, Mr. Wright, let's hear your theory. Who do you say is the killer's real client and therefore the real murderer? Obviously, she did have access to a, a costume. Adrian Andrews? These final cases get more and more morally gray with every game. Oh, Jesus Christ, how morally gray will the last one be? I have to act... Do I know that there's a murderer on trial, but they actually are innocent of the murder they're being tried for? Yes, we already know that she tried to frame Matt on guard for the crime by wearing a spare nickel samurai costume. Ugh, then... Than the nickel samurai's arm that I saw. That could have very well been Miss Andrews. But what about Mr. On Guard? If you would please recall yesterday's testimony. The defendant was taking a nap during the break period. That's right. Then finding this figurine at Mr. On Guard's mansion. It was a well laid trap set by Miss Andrews. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, what is your opinion on this? I can't even begin to count the flaws in the defense's logic, besides which there is no evidence to support it. However, I can't fully discount its possibility either. Hmm. I haven't played uh, Dual Destinies or Spirit of Justice, but it stands for the games 1 through 4. I can't believe the defense would go so far as to pin the gu guilt onto someone else. Yeah, unbelievable! It's not something petty, it's murder of all things! This is to save Maya. This is to save Maya! Even if the whole world turns against me, this is one fight I can't give up on. Order! 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 All disruptive parties will be forced to leave the courtroom! Your Honor, for the benefit of the defense, I'm willing to play along with his what-if game. His what-if game, Mr. Edgeworth? The prosecution is prepared to challenge the defense's theory. Mr. Wright, even if you must have thought it strange and wondered, why would the criminal want this little wooden bear? He's right. The killer did specifically bring that bear to on guard right away. Why do you ask? Is there something special about it? Absolutely. And I'm sure that once the court knows its significance, the true killer's identity will become crystal clear. Your Honor, the prosecution calls upon a witness who will clear all doubts against Miss Andrews. And who would that be? It's quite simple, Your Honor. Miss Adrian Andrews herself. My C. Well then, the court will take a short ten minute recess. The prosecution will prepare its witness in that time. Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> but I think that we're going to stop there because we've been going for about three hours. And we've done quite a lot, and I think the next stream should finish it. I can't find it, I tried. Ah, well. <laughs> but, yeah, things are go heating up, because this is a very interesting, like, different game mechanic. We're defending the actual guilty party, and we're just trying to buy time until we can throw him under the bus. So that's interesting. But yeah, we've been going for three hours. There's nothing to ponder upon anymore because everything's laid out clearly. The only thing that's really up in the air is if the killer knows he's going, like, if he knows that his client on guard 
recorded everything and is willing to blackmail him. So, then again, I... Though it also depends if the, like, stitched up face is his actual face. It's probably not. It's probably a disguise. So it's impossible. It's possible on guard is just a dumbass. But yeah, <laughs> there's nothing to really ponder upon. We're gonna be finding out. Well, I guess let's find out. We're gonna put the nail in the coffin of this case next time. I do believe, unless we somehow go for the third day, which I just I do not see happening. This this is a two day, a two day, like court case. And it's just so extremely long. <laughs> or at least so far, it's a two-day. So who knows how long it'll go. But yeah, this is a very interesting case, and I really, really like it. It's just, just nothing else to ponder. The truth is out there. We're just trying to bullshit our way to save some time. But, yes, thank you very much for watching, everybody. If you want more from me, I have two YouTube channels, an edited content YouTube channel, Neon Icy Wings. I swear content is coming soon. And then the streaming YouTube channel, where all these streams eventually end up after the streams themselves end, called Neon Icy Games. And if you prefer to watch uh, the streams live on Twitch, I also have the Twitch, twitch.tv slash Neon Icy Wings. Other such things, like the various arts that I draw, similar to my little character in the corner, can be found on the multitude of social media sites like Twitter, Tumblr, DeviantArt, Inkblot, and so many others that have direct links in my link tree, which should be linked in the various bio, yeah, bios, descriptions, link places of the internet world, and it should be linktr.ee slash neoniceywings. But yes... I can't wait to begin this next time and see if we can finish it. Good God, if it goes for a third day. <laughs> but, yes, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you dudes next time. Bye-bye.